Hello, everybody. Yo, what's going on? Welcome to the Anime Mystics Podcast again. Um, I'm Roman. I'm Steven Sonoski Sama. And we're just going to be discussing some of the anime that came out the last couple weeks. Yes. Um, but first, updates. Uh, Belle is feeling a lot better. Good. I would say maybe 90%. Uh, she's still a little groggy and all that from being sick, but for the most part, she's up and about. She's moving around. She's not feeling like her body hurts or anything like that anymore, so she's pretty much back to normal. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who wished her well, and uh, yeah, hopefully when she gets 100%, we can start doing One Piece again. I know I keep saying that, and we never do, <laughs> but hopefully. <laughs> yeah, you know, real life happens, so you know we all just gotta make do. And and most importantly, she's back. She's healthy, and she can go back and, and join the family. So that's that's good. That's great. Yes, especially since she was she was missing her baby. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's that's she, the worst. She had been, I think, since the baby was born, she had not been anywhere that the baby wasn't. Right. So she's always been around the baby. So now that she was sick and had to have the baby away from her, she was going crazy. Yeah, it's it's you get into the routine, you know, where you're like, okay, at this time, baby's hungry, got to feed the baby, change the baby, play with the baby, baby's nap time, and then when that doesn't happen, that routine gets broken. Yeah. Uh, and then on the flip side, there's the baby's part too, because you know attachment yeah. is is very important for the development of the baby. So baby's getting used to to the routine itself. And then all of a sudden, mom stops showing up, and it's like, what, what, what the hell? What, what's got a, up? Got a deadbeat mom here, yeah, right? <laughs> yo, yo, you know. Let me cry some more until mom shows up like she's supposed to. Yeah. So, sorry, <laughs> human development major. Anyways, continue. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah, though. you were you were right though. Um, she would say like when she was sick, and her boyfriend would bring the baby by, you know, just to kind of grab whatever. Like he needs to grab something. He didn't want to leave the baby at home or something with his parents. He would just bring the baby, and she would see her, and she would just get all excited and then they'd be leaving without going over to see her and she'd start crying yeah. so yeah you, you're right about the baby also being like with her attachment and everything mm -hmm. um but yeah now they don't have to worry about that because she's she's better good just got to get over the little minor things now you know sore body right. <laughs> and all that but she's she i don't think she's really got corona anymore she's just from lying in bed all that time and <laughs> got to get back into the routine. Yeah. So she doesn't have Corona anymore, so she's moved on to Tecate to, to or more Modelo? Mm. I think it's more Modelo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mexican beer jokes. <laughs> but right on. It's funny because I remember seeing a bunch of posts about people who actually thought that the Corona beer company <laughs> caused coronavirus. Yeah. And their stock actually took a dive because of it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Modelo goes into the office. They're like, what? <laughs> yeah, let's run with this. I think the Corona office had to actually send out like a a post saying, yeah, we don't cause coronavirus. <laughs> it's just the name. It's not us. You can still drink our beer and be fine. <laughs> Oh, man, that sucks. I, 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 you know, I don't want to to be a negative Nancy or anything, but it's almost like, man, I really wish it would have gone. Then we could have gone to Corona cheaper, right? <laughs> <laughs> Corona never goes on sale, man. It's always expensive. So uh, at least that's my take. If you guys know where I can get cheap Corona, by all means, let me know. Mexico, Mex, Mex, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't don't tease me with a good time. But then, are they even going to let you win the country? Uh, yeah. That's that's, the that, that's you know that's always the question here in my household. It's always like I want to go to Japan. You can't go to Japan. Um, and then the prime minister of Japan he retires. I'm like, what the? Anyways, right. we'll get back to that later. Yeah, we'll... Thank you for bringing that up, Roman. Welcome back, Bell. <laughs> yes, yes. Crack open a Corona for Bell. Yeah, we'll have to do that. And uh, final update. I'm sure you've all noticed that a few episodes have started coming out. Like three a day. I've got a bunch of videos, like 17 videos scheduled to come out throughout the week. That should catch me up to everything. I still haven't edited all of the uh, girlfriend, uh, Run a Girlfriend episodes. But 
they're getting done. I should have those ready for next week. Um, same with Bang Dream. <laughs> the, the issue with Bang Dream is I have to actually do the subtitles myself because mm. I can't extract them from the video because I get those from YouTube and I guess they don't have an actual subtitle file. So yeah, I gotta actually figure out the milliseconds and everything and then type out all of the subtitles. So it takes a little bit. He he does it he does all this because he loves you all. That's why he does it. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, but that's basically it. Just keep a lookout for all those episodes coming out. Uh should catch me up with everything that I had coming out before. Um even Muyo to Ryoji is caught up and that's coming out soon hopefully by the time this is uploaded it's already been uh, released so yeah cool beans yep, so yep. lots of channel updates that's good so and again I forward them onto the Facebook page so there's always that uh, should we start posting them in the discord too mm. yeah I used to do that okay we'll start and then people were like I'm getting two notifications one from YouTube and one from you on here and I'm like well <laughs> then, then, then make sure. Want to make sure everybody sees it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Then maybe I'll, I'll take it upon myself and I'll start forwarding it to uh, Discord so they, they don't yell at you. Like yell at me. I can take it. I can take the heat. Cool, cool. But yeah. All right. All right. Um. What's up? Uh, what's up? Oh no, good. Oh uh, no, I, I just, I'm about to rant and rave about random stuff. Oh yeah, I was gonna say that's about it for my updates. So right. go ahead and. Start your rant. <laughs> uh, well, a couple things. Uh, we This was, uh, what, the second viewing party that we had for Uzaki-chan. So uh, we actually had a late comer, and so we just ended up watching all the episodes up to date. So yep. that was uh, that was fun. Um, Since we did it on Thursday, the next episode came out the next day. So yeah. everybody was caught up for it. Correct. That came in and watched. Correct. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep doing this. Um, so be sure to... Stay tuned. Check out the Facebook. Check out the Discord. We are going to start taking... We are taking uh, requests. So submissions, things that people are interested in. With enough time, post up, respond. We're, we're thinking about what polls to do. Maybe we'll even start doing themes. I know that at some point I want to do like the Fate movies because the Heaven's Field Part 3 is coming so at some point I wanted to do Heaven's Field Parts 1 and 2, maybe in two different sessions, so people don't, you know, get bored and fall asleep right. or just leave. So um, <laughs> the, that'll be a, a future event. Uh, I was even thinking about doing, like, retro, like, at some point doing, like, a Fist of the North Star or Bubblegum Crisis or Google 13 or something, like, retro. 80s. 80s, yeah. 90s. yeah. We can do 90s. We can do Tenshi Muyo or Ranma. So True. Was Ranma 90s? Kind of. I, I consider it 90s good. I think it's like late 80s, like 88, 89 maybe. Okay. But, or maybe that was the manga. I don't know. I consider, I call it 90s though. I count it as 90s. We could even go very retro and do Astro Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys want to say, I'm, I'm more of a Saint Say, I'll do that. But yeah, ret- yeah, Astro Boy, I'm down. Let's go. Um. So yeah, we got, whatever. I'm I'm open to whatever. Whatever I can, I can find or get my hands on, I will definitely, uh, throw it up on the discord viewing party. So again, this is uh, our chance to interact with you all and bring everyone into the fold. So this is a a very community based uh, event. So I'm open to suggestions. Roman's taking suggestions, Mm -hmm. recommendations, whatever you guys are are interested in, please let us know. and We'll, uh, we'll hash it out. We'll definitely talk it out. Uh, we are doing Katana Gatari, Katana Gatari, mm-hmm. uh, episodes one and two for the next viewing party. So, uh, the, uh, the, the details will be up on the Facebook page and discord, uh, ASAP so that people that want to check that out, can come, uh, can come. with us. Yeah. Uh, that was a, a recommendation by Roman. Cause he said that you, we should watch something I haven't seen and he knows that I haven't seen anything from that era because I said this morning, I don't even know what a Nisekoi is. Yes, and we'll get into that later when we get to that show. <laughs> and that yeah, discussed in that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the viewing party is uh, is going to roll on uh, again. It's uh, we're aiming for Thursday nights, opposite of the week we record podcasts. So for this week, it's the podcast. Next week, the other week will be the viewing parties, and that's kind of what we're looking at. 
Uh, in the instance of maybe like the Fate movies, maybe we'll do one one per week, or maybe we'll just keep the schedule the same. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it depends on, on everyone's schedule and our schedules, and, and we'll hash it out. So follow the Facebook page, follow the Discord, all that stuff. You know the gen- you know, yeah. you know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Follow uh, the social medias. Yes. Uh, right, and then uh, I guess we had two uh, two um, obituaries, quote unquote, uh, to kind of uh, put light on uh, on a tragic moment. And then uh, real quick, the more serious one is uh, Black Panther. He Chadwick passed away. Boseman. Chadwick Boseman on yeah. Friday. Um, uh, colon cancer. Yeah, and he's forty three. Um, I'm 36, so if that doesn't make you uh, take a step back and reanalyze what you're doing with yourself. Um, I'm trying to go get that finger up your butt. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I think it was the quartering he was talking about it, and he said, you know what, it is a finger in the rear, but you know what, if that's what it takes to save your life, wouldn't it be worth it? Yeah. So, you know, and and he brought up a good point, too. He's like, you know, as a bunch of dudes, we, we are, you know, all masculine, and we all think we're Rambo, and you know, Terminator and, and nothing can phase us. And then because we didn't get the finger in the rear, now we knew we dropped dead in three years. I'm so. More of a David Spade. Yeah, David Spade. All right, Joe Dirt. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, definitely no Rambo. The the <laughs> the Romans a new groove. Or maybe even a a Poly Shore. Poly Shore. Okay. <laughs> in the army now, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um. But yeah, it's uh. So you know. And and again, I'll always say that uh, his portrayal in Civil War of Black Panther was one of the the key moments. I honestly thought him in, in Civil War was better than his own movie. But I think that was uh, the director, those the Russo brothers. They were the ones that directed both the Avengers Endgame and Infinity War. So, you know, they, they know what's up. And, and Winter Soldier. So, the, yeah. Winter Soldier, yeah. Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, they, well, the thing was with... So they did direct Infinity War and Endgame, but Infinity War was all of them, was all them with no involvement of Disney, and then Endgame was with them, with Disney's involvement. Because they, apparently in the boardroom, that was a huge clash of ideas, was because they, you know, Disney's like, we got an agenda, we want to push it, and the Russos were like, well, we want to make a good movie. <laughs> and then, so they were like, okay, we're going to split it then, we have Infinity War and we have Endgame. And Infinity War is all yours. You can do it as you want. And then Endgame is, is our ideas. And, you know, that's how you ended up with the, uh, hi, Peter Parker, you got something for me? <laughs> so, if you um, can see Sano's face right now. <laughs> for all, for those of you who don't know, they actually did make a dojin for that. <laughs> you can probably look it up and find it. No, you know, we're here to talk about <laughs> Chadwick Boseman passing away. Sorry, and, you're the and, one that brought up Spider-Man you know, and Captain Marvel. No, because, you know, that's the movie he went out on, you know? <laughs> Um, uh, and, and there was, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to get too much into that, but yeah, he, he did, he did right. a lot. He brought a character that was kind of in the, in the mid grounds. It was one of those guys where it's like, if you knew about him, you liked him. And if you didn't really know about him, then you're just kind of like, hey, okay, I'm going to go back to Spider-Man. Right. But he made that character relevant Yeah. and you know, you can't take anything from him. And he was, he was relatively drama free, you know, college educated from, I believe South Carolina, at least South Carolina university, I believe. So, drama-free, no drugs, no alcohol, no abuse, no scandals, no nothing. He just was mellow. and He just did his thing. Yeah, and, and you, can't, you can't hate the guy. So, you know, my uh, condolences to him and his family. And he, yes. he made his mark. He will be remembered. And, you know, if we had a couple more actors like him in the world, I think we'd be in a much better place. But, you know, he's, uh, he's gone from this world into a much better place. So, you know, hey, you know, carry on, brother. Um, the other, uh, less serious, but, uh, nonetheless, eyebrow moving, uh, obituary for me was, uh, the prime minister of Japan, uh, Shinzo Abe just, just, just like, I'm out, peace, deuces. He's all like, you know what? I don't want to see another Trump presidency. I'm out of here. I don't, I don't know. That's probably not it. He just, uh, he basically said the same thing they all say. He's like, I just want to go spend time with my family. And it's like, peace. And I gotta give him thanks because he's the reason why I was able to go to Japan in <laughs> two week intervals back to back because he absolutely refused to close the country. 
Look how long. It took him until, like, what, March or April before he finally said no Olympics? He did not want to close it down. He did not want to shut it down. So, and I went, like, what, February? Yeah, it was, like, right after Valentine's I went. Yeah. Uh, and then when I was all like, yo, dude, no one is going on these planes. I'm going back. And so I went back. And it was because of him, man. He, he absolutely refused to close it. And, and you know, I know a lot of people, even some Japanese natives, they would be like, that was a dumb move. But I'm all like, well, you know, the, the, to the to the brave go the spoils, you know? <laughs> what can I say? So I still got a bag of stuff over here from, <laughs> from Akihabara that I haven't distributed yet because um, I just haven't seen people because of quarantine. Um, yeah. But... You know, he was very stubborn, very, uh, yeah, very uh, pro-Japan. So uh, just like any other politician, though, he had a bunch of people that just didn't like him and were just, he can't do anything right. And I, when I was talking to uh, my friend over there and I, I asked him, you know, he said that I remember and I, I could be wrong or mistaken because you know, there's always – issues with translation, but, uh, Abe seemed to be very, uh, pro Japanese military. And I asked him, I'm like, would you like to see Japan get its actual military back? And he's all like, hell yeah. And I'm all like, yo man, I'm okay with this. Cause I feel that if uh, the Japanese got their military back and we stay on their good sides, we could do some damage out there in the, in the Pacific. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying, you know, look what look what happened when we were uh, at each other's throats. If we're on the same side, all I'm saying is the Japanese are a little based, man. You got you they y'all couldn't take out Uzaki, okay? What makes you think you could take out their military? I'm just saying, man. And then they got Gundams. Oh, <laughs> operational Gundams. Rest in peace, Shinzo Abe. I'll miss you. I appreciate your contributions, man. <laughs> Yo, he actually put the uh, Mario Brothers in Narita Airport, man. I was like, when I went in the first time in February, and I'm like, yo, Rosalina is telling me welcome to Japan. They know what's up. They know that the weebs are out there. And they're all like, y'all like, like Uzaki-chan? We gonna give you Uzaki-chan. Thank you, Shinzo Abe. You, you, you know what's up. So, but... I, I say this and at the same time, too, he could have been the one that also signed the uh, anti-piracy order. <laughs> that made everyone go into, like, Rrr! But, um... But at the same time, too, that might have all been coordinated because it was almost like, what, the same day that they did that? Was the, the same day that all those, uh... The animation studios all announced that YouTube channel that they were all going to stream from or whatever? Yeah, yeah. The... Yeah, I forgot what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about. Because I saw someone meme that, where they were actually putting, um, what the hell is that? Like, my, my sister is my girlfriend or something? I don't know. And this was like, where she's like on Onichan's bed and she's got like no clothes on. It's not a hentai. And I'm all like, yo, they were like, they, YouTube really streaming anime out here. And I was caught off guard. I was like, I didn't think that this was going to be a thing. And, I, and if it was a thing, I didn't think it was going to go live like right now. Yeah, but it's apparently already up and running, and I and it's it's yeah, and I guess they told YouTube they were like, "Yo, cut the crap, we're gonna show anime. Don't block it." And YouTube's like, "Okay." So yeah, I I yeah, this could it could have all been coordinated, but you know, and it could also be that for now it's free and all that, but you know, after New Year's they'll start charging or make a subscription. Who knows? But. For everything that I'm praising Abe for, he also was the one that allowed that anti-piracy thing to, to go through. And that's, you know, one of the inspirations for why we're doing viewing parties is to continue to spread the joy and love of, of Japanese animation. So, yep. you know, you know, you, you have to uh, you have to be able to, to critique the ones you love and the things you love or else you'll never when it does happen and it catches you off guard then you'll get even more angry and frustrated and being confused like why why did this happen ah but you were the chosen one and it's all like well he was getting pressured you know so but as a result look at what came out about this they they collaborated and all that i hope and and kyo annie is about to get resurrected so i hope they join the channel too yep so and it's also it's subtitled too right it's officially subtitled yeah yeah sub. yeah so they they know we're out there. They know we're a market, and and they are 
reaching out to us. So so props to them. Um, and and sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Are are you happy that you you killed Madoka Magica record? You you beat uh, Aoyuki. Congratulations. I mean, she should have played a better character. Wow. Wow. Somebody more interesting. Wow, this guy, no mercy. Uh, but and and that came up too because I was watching um, Toho Sniper's stream on Saturday. I think Sa- yeah, I think Saturday, or yeah, I think Saturday. And they were talking about it for a little bit too. And it's you know they're saying the same thing that uh, Japan is still the primary market and like USA and, and Europe and. Maybe not China. Maybe China is also like their true secondary market, but everybody else is basically secondary. Well, and so, <laughs> but um, yeah, they said that their games will forever and always be primarily based for Japan and the Japanese audiences. And if it gets successful in other territories, then great. Then they'll definitely take us to the cleaners and, and milk our bank accounts. But. Don't get it twisted that there's still a Japanese company focused on on making games for the Japanese. And I'm okay with that because that's why I like it is because it's not American style. <laughs> you know, as much as we love Big Mouth and Adventure Time. Well, I like Adventure Time, but Big Mouth I haven't seen. Yeah, it's the Netflix one, yeah. Yeah, so, I know. But um I just haven't seen it and I don't plan on watching it. <laughs> um But Adventure Time I'll watch all day. Yeah. <laughs> um Rick and Morty. I haven't seen that in forever. I haven't seen that. You haven't seen it at all? Mm. Oh, yeah. Just there the Doritos go. commercial. <laughs> there you go. That's <laughs> what you're that's what you're missing because you're watching anime. You're missing out on quality American programming like that. Um like Gumball. Gumball. <laughs> they had an anime episode. Oh man. Um yeah, it did, actually. And it, it, it like had support from Studio Trigger, didn't it? Like I think so. Yeah. Something yeah. like that, yeah. Um Yeah, so and that's that's what it is, though. They're they're like that. And I guess they also put out an earnings report. And I guess um, they actually made money year over year because of uh, Castoria. These the yeah, these jerks made like what was it, it was like six point three billion like last year. Uh, and I guess they, be- they said it was like double. Yeah. What they did the year before. Okay, so that's what it was. It was three. So it was three billion, and it doubled to six billion because of Castoria. Okay. Yeah. And I believe it. I was thinking about doing an FGO talk today, but I, we'll we'll skip it. Maybe next time. But um, I will say that Castoria is game breaking because my uh, swimsuit Murasaki Shikibu can clear out the third wave all by herself. Oh man! Granted, I have to do a little finagling because I have a uh, Bunny Toria, and Bunny Toria just like locks cards out so that uh, Murasaki can get a triple arts with a hundred percent stars. And then the uh, the arts boost. Yep, yep. It's uh, it's pretty broken. <laughs> I get, I get it, I get it. But again, the bottom line is that it's a Japanese made game for the Japanese audience, and this this uh, this ties into what Abe was doing when he passed the legislation because he did sign off on it. He is well, he was the prime minister when it went into effect, even though he's no longer the prime minister. He was the one who put it into law, and we also said this at the last episode: support the industry. So, if you can't, you can't get it. But you know what? Even going to a con, if you buy a ticket for a con, that that supports the industry too. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I always see them be like, buy Blu-rays, buy DVDs. No, no, you don't do that. If you can't do that, if you don't want to do that, don't do that. All you can do is buy a book. If all you can do is buy someone's Artist Alley artwork, that all counts. It all, all counts. So no contribution is ever too little. So support the industry however you can. If you throw some money at your favorite gotcha game, cool. No one's going to hate you if you can't. And, you know. I know most of the FGO people are like, thank you for spending so much money because we're getting all this great right. stuff coming out. Right. And that's what Toho <laughs> was doing. He's like, you know, I like to flex, but if I got to flex to prove you guys that this is what, what makes the game keep this keeps the game going. And it's like, I I, I don't wail on his level, but I, you know, I know exactly where he's coming from. What did he do? Was it him who, uh, like, got... Five copies of a servant, Scotty. maxed them, yeah, maxed Scotty. them all out, and then burned them or something. He didn't or burn them. Maxus, Max, uh, yeah, he Max ascended, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. He, uh, and I think if I remember right, he did get 
one NP5 Scotty or was it like an NP2? Or it was a multi NP Scotty, and then he got a b- couple more, like for good measure. Yeah. So he has like five Scotties total. Yeah. I don't know if they're 10 10 10, but I think they're at least for sure 9 9 9. I think they were 9 9 9. Yeah. And one I think was 10 10 10. Yeah. Because that's the one that he uses for his looping. Yeah. But uh, yeah, because he can. Um, and and that's that's what it's all about. So. Um, Must be nice. <laughs> you know. I'm over here like, I could spend a little more money. If I don't pay this yet and do <laughs> that. Have a little more money to get Iskander. We we call that the gotcha guilt. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh yeah, but yeah, and that's what keeps the game going, man. That's that's why we'll you know in Roman's case he'll be able to get Castoria is because by supporting the game, they they see it's a good investment and then you know they'll keep it around for two more years. So I think the one thing I got to do is I got to look up uh, Carmilla Riders. Uh, ascension material and skill material, so I can start saving for her. You know, what, 10, 10, 10? Yeah. NP5? NP5. Wow, this guy. There you go. You heard it first. This guy. In uh, approximately 11 months, NP5 Carmilla, 10, 10, 10. So, all you Liz lovers, watch out. Yeah. When you hear those tires screeching, that's Roman and Carmilla coming down the road. <laughs> Laughing as we run her down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. What's funny is that, you know, Japan has uh, notoriously hot and humid summers. And they made an event in FGO that takes place in Vegas. Another notoriously hot and actually dry summer. And I'm all like, why would you ever want to go in there, like, willingly go to Vegas in the summertime, in the middle of the summer? That that baffled me. But it was a fun event, though. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if I'm going to NP5 per se, but yeah. But I don't know. I mean, Sushis. I'll get my NP one for like the five stars. What was that um, Bunny Toria and who mm-hmm. else is the five star? Uh, Musashi Berserker. And Musashi. Yeah. So banner one is uh, Musashi Osaka Behime and Carmilla, and then banner two is Bunny Toria, Melty, and Melty Bunny uh, o- Okita. Yes. Yes. Jet Okita. Okita Jet Soji. Yes. Yeah. Carmilla is my main objective, though. You know, I actually did NP4, uh, Mabe. <laughs> I wasn't trying to, but I did. I was just rolling to see who I would get, and she just wouldn't... Just kept showing up. And I was like, okay. Nice. I think we're tied. I think I have a four as well. So, But I, I also uh, got a... was it? Two BB and two Hero Double X... So, yeah, double X was. I, I did get a second BB two actually. Did I actually? <laughs> well, while he's checking that out, um, it's basically it. Uh, we got the viewing party. Support the industry, and uh, go get checked out. Stay on top of your health, especially like we just said. You you saw what happened with Bell, and Bell recovered, and it did not work out so well for Chadwick Boseman. So, s- get checked. Do what you got to do. Follow the doctor's instructions. Don't if you're not feeling it, please check yourself out. Don't take anything for for granted. And yeah, and uh, support the industry. Yeah, that's why we're here. That's why there. That's why even like Chadwick did what he did, man. He's just he loves the industry. He was down with the the films and movies, and he lived his passion. So do it. Okay. So yeah. I have an NP4 Mave, an MP2 BB, an NP2 uh, uh, MHXX. Double X. Um, NP2. Uh, what's that Oni's name? Oh, Ibaraki? Ibaraki. Banana? Banana and Lancer? NP1 Ushiwaka. Hmm. Nice. At least I got an Ushiwaka. Yeah. I think I got everybody from the banners. I just. The second banner was what I was mostly interested in. Why, what were you interested in on the second banner? Well, I needed a, a Moon Cancer, oh. so I needed BB. I think Maeve was in the second banner. Mm-hmm. So, Maeve. Uh, if you needed a Moon Cancer, why didn't you just wait for Kiara? Because <laughs> that's another two years. Yeah, I, and I have a hard enough time dealing with Avengers. I'm always like, God, stupid Avengers. I gotta, 
need a, nobody ever wants to use BB in my support. <laughs> I think I have like one person who does. But yeah, yeah, no, you're right. So yeah, I had to get a BB. And I figured MP2 would be a good good spot for now till next year and they do the rerun. Okay. Are we talking anime now? Yes. All right. So we're starting off with the uh, the Misfit Demon Academy. Misfit of Demon King, Demon Lord, whatever Academy. Do not confuse him with uh, Avlos. It's unrelated to Anos. Yes. Not Avos. It's Anos. That's right. Who apparently, up until this point, was only using ten percent of his power. <laughs> So it's not even his final form, huh? Well, apparently whenever you're resurrected, you only come back with about 10% of your power until you can build it back up. Correct. Uh, and I remember the villain, I can't remember the dude's name, the old man that he was fighting, <laughs> was talking about how usually that's what happens, and he was you know, glad to see that he was able to bring out all of his power, and then he's later like, oh, well, you know, I didn't actually, I'm still only using 10%. <laughs> But now, now I'm good. So yeah, he was only using 10% of his power throughout this entire show. Just killing people with his heartbeat. <laughs> Fighting people off with a stick. Stabbing teachers in the back. Who totally had it coming. Just uh, spinning uh, Sasha's castle on one finger. Yeah, spinning Sasha's castle. I'm sure she'd like to be spinning on something, but... Whoa! Oh! 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 oh. <laughs> Family friendly! Oh! He's, he's talking about his dad's sword. Yeah. Sword, quote-unquote. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Oh, man. You're so, the one that turned us into an NTR talk. <laughs> did I? <laughs> <laughs> when, when did I... When, NTR and Demon Academy? This bit, what? His dad's sword, not his. Oh. Well, yeah, well, you know, Anos is using his dad's sword, and everyone is envious of his dad's awesome sword. His dad really put a lot of heart into making that sword, so who wouldn't want to use it? That's what I'm saying. Right. Sure. Oh, Everybody on. was really interested in learning who his dad was, though. Yeah. After his whole... Uh, this was made by my dad and it's super great and blah 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 you know <laughs> <laughs> so wait doesn't that uh, if if sasha is uh trying to hook up with uh with anos doesn't that make her uh a criminal because he's like a one month old i guess so doesn't that make her a cradle robber possibly see it doesn't apply to misha though because that's consensual <laughs> so misha is off the hook well, Misha's happy just being his friend. Right. She's constantly mentioned that she's his friend. Even though they seem to be a lot closer. Right. I, I think the demons have a different comprehension of friend zone. It's just, uh, Sasha's actually kissed him twice, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, we've had this conversation. We had this conversation offline, and, and again, I think we talked about it last week, too, but it's just like, I don't know, I'm... Soon today is like I don't, maybe this season I'm not I'm not really feeling soon today is or maybe there's just too many soon today is and I'm just like I'm lost in the mix and so it's just kind of like it's not even again anything against Sasha because she gets the job done she's very capable and it's a good design it's just I, not doing anything for you yeah so I'm more like and, it, and I think that Misha is just because of she's riding Uzaki's tail coats worth the uh, cute moe girls that know how to cook. Is just is my thing right now, and it's just kind of like I think that you know because I see it in Uzaki and then I see it in Misha, and I'm just kind of like, oh, okay, I like that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm down with that. I approve of that. Does she know how to cook? Yeah, remember think... she was teaching. She was, she was being taught by amazing mom. Well, she doesn't know yet. She's learning. Yeah, she's getting there. Yeah. So she's putting in work. Right, and I'm like, I, I appreciate that. So I think that's why. Uh, do I like the whole Nagato Yuki personality from uh, Haruhi? I get that. That's kind of like the dead A is like, eh. yeah. But I'm not into those. yeah, that's fine. The the whole Rei Ayanami thing, 
That's fair. Yeah. I get it, but... You see, even then, I liked Asuka. <laughs> there you go, classical Sundere. Asuka over Rey, Sasha over Misha. At least you're consistent. Yeah. But then again, if the other girl was better, I probably would have chose her. <laughs> yeah, but which, but which more better do you want than loyal? I need a better personality. <laughs> Well, you're also, uh, you're getting a bit more of a world development too. What episode is this? This episode, uh, this episode, last episode was nine. Nine. Out of 12? Uh, I think 13. 13, okay. So, yeah, I, I don't know, it's just, we were getting world character, well, we had character development, but now we were getting, like, world development, so, yeah, it was, uh, you nine episodes and we're finally learning he can have like limitations and 13 13 okay and you know he's getting his squad back which is nice too um and i at first i was all like is is the guy that was it lay right or k it's weird because i think i I was watching someone else's video and they mentioned that in the first episode he was mentioned and they said his name was Ray. And then they changed it to Lay. So, Lay. Yeah. It's like, I'm confused because is he supposed to be the reincarnated hero or is he in the reincarnated general guy? No, he's the general guy. Okay. Um, according, because if you go by this last episode, right. they said that he had, the, the hero had seven sources mm-hmm. and I guess... Each one of them are going to resurrect separately. Even though Anno said that it was highly doubtful that they were his sources because they were duds. Correct. Like the actual source, not them as a person. Even though they, they suck too. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're cool when they're with their friends. You mean the other sources? Yeah. <laughs> and there's only four of them in that class too. Which means the other three aren't even around yet. I for, was the uh, what's her name Bianca right or Blanca, the new girl? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Was uh, did she say she was a source too, or she was just giving him a tour? She was just giving him a tour. Okay, they wanted to go inside and look around and check things out, and he wanted to try to find the hero. Right. So she was like, you know what, you guys, come on in. If you're, if you're with me, you'll be fine. So they, t- I think they wanted to go to the library to look up a few things, and that's where they ran into those other two. The, Jabronis. Yeah, the one dude who seems to be a book nerd and the other one who's a jock. <laughs> Just reminded me of Cinemasins. That and I did, it didn't even <laughs> dawn on me. Maybe because I was playing FGO at the time, but yeah, when he was walking down the stairs with this book, nerd! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you have the, the hot-blooded meathead. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Now what are the other ones are gonna going to be like? The other two. Uh, you're gonna have the uh, the emo Sasuke type, um, and then what's he? What was his name? I forgot his name too. In Boku Hero, the one that can change different animals, or at least different animal appendages. Oh, from the big three. Yeah. The that version of Sasuke, same thing. Okay. If they look, if they have that hairstyle, then they're they're just emo and like, oh, what am I doing here? Oh, he's so loud. Yeah, that's gonna be the the third guy, and then the fourth guy is gonna be. Uh, sassy chick and sassy chick is going to be all like you know like ha oh, i'm the best you know yo you can't even step up to me and then sasha will put her in her place or misha yeah or both of them yeah yeah because misha wasn't there right yeah she misha was... went off with someone else uh who did she go off with i think the leader of the fan club <laughs> the fan club <laughs> The fan club's great, though. Don't get me wrong. I love the fan club. Yeah. So apparently, they have two more songs <laughs> than the ones they sang at the uh, the one they sang at the uh, tournament. You know, when you put it like that, I'm sure that the uh, Demon Misfit like <laughs> OST is going to be great when they actually do full on songs like <laughs> recorded. Yeah. So that's going to probably be dope. Uh, and I only know that because I read a comment in uh, some post about it. I forget what it, I think it was an actual post about the show and somebody was in there because they were talking about how cringy it was that they were singing that song during Aww. the tournament. 
And I was like, you just don't know how to have fun. And right. Someone else was like, well, just wait till later when they do the other two. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I I think I'm rubbing off on Roman now because now it's all like when people just say, oh, you know, when people call it cringe because it's cringe just to say cringe, that's cringe. So it's like, come on. So, uh, yeah, and it's, 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 you know, hey, I hate to break and make this, uh, comparison, but, uh, Eins didn't have a fan club. He only had, what, two groupies, Shaltier and Albedo. Yeah. Honest has an entire squad, so get wrecked. Sing songs and everything. Yeah. How many songs did Albedo sing? Which is funny because uh, the voice actress actually was in uh, Idol Master, so. Oh, really? Yeah, Yumi Hara Yumi. Yeah, she was in uh, Idol Master. Or so. uh, Albedo? Mm hmm. Hmm. So, Anastasia, goddamn hot. <laughs> so, yeah, same voice actress. But yeah, you would think. I'm sure that, uh, like. Harayumi has sung songs, like character songs and whatnot, for Albedo, but in terms of like the uh, the Ein's cheer squad, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna he's gonna, gonna have that. Yeah. So, but yeah, and let's face it, Ein's couldn't stand up to Ano said his ten percent. Now that he's got a hundred, has he officially gone hundred? I don't know. They haven't okay. officially said. But I know he said something about possibly getting more of his power. Was, he, he mentioned something happening, and mm -hmm. thanks to this, he's all like, and, you know, he's got more of his power now. I don't know if he's got 100%. Did, um... I forgot what I was going to say. I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> go ahead and continue. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we... we found out a few things because they were going to the uh hero academy right. which they brought up a good point why do you need a hero academy if we're at peace these people are supposed to be defeating demons like why do you need that and it's because they're setting up that one guy that they show him kill in the beginning of episode nine right. probably like resurrected and trying to start this whole thing like another war to kill all the demons making the humans the bad guys oh why would you do that I know, right? Humans are the good guys. Right? It's not our fault you were there first. I like, did want to say that it was funny how how fast they replaced the teacher. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> With a much better teacher. A little bit more energetic, sure. Yeah. A little less, little less, uh... Classist. <laughs> <laughs> like, she didn't care that he was a misfit. True. He got his answer right. He's like, that's right. And, and that also raised another point. So do Sasha and Misha actually believe he is the reincarnated demon lord? Because he's, he's just talking about it like, yeah, you know, this is me. I used to have better powers and all that. So they they know who he is now, right? Yeah. Okay. They have... Yeah, they 100% believe. Okay. Just like the fan club. And they didn't need to be, like, around him to be like, he's the, the resurrected demon lord. They're just like, get bit him. Okay. Start a fan club. Let's get some Dogens in here. <laughs> the shirtless posters? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, go on with your bad self. What did, I, what did I tell you? You love something, buy the merch. So, hey. Right. You love Ahanos, go get them posters and them Dogens. So. You know they're out there. Oh, man. You know, it's all good and fun and games until they start doing the Ahanos cross lay Dogen, and then it's just weird. For all those Joshis out there. Yeah. Well, I mean, the fan club was all female, so you know. Yeah. So you know, the very first uh, uh, Yahweh Dojin that I ever encountered was actually Virgil and Dante. Wow. So that that was just kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna go on my merry business. What? Is, why is Virgil and Dante? Why are they covered together? We're gonna ah. <laughs> and that's uh, that was my first encounter with all of that. Like I didn't need to see that. Yeah. I mean, now it's like, hey, man, go on with your bad self. To which you know, we uh, we just we'll just awkwardly nod at each other as we're both we're all degenerates in our own special ways. But yeah, the Anos uh, lay dogens. Mm -hmm. All right, call it a de degenerate on more than one occasion. <laughs> Mostly on the Discord, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't deny it. I'm like yeah. you're right, I am. <laughs> Here's more of my degeneracy. <laughs> But yeah, um, actually, what's funny is that you don't really. There's not a whole lot of fan service in this show, huh? 
There's no like like ponzu no. shots or anything like that. And this one actually keeps itself fairly uh, on the subject matter. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of that. Not really any boob jiggles. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, maybe every once in a while, but it's very rare. Yeah. And it's usually like somebody's thrown or something, and you know there's going to be a little jiggle. <laughs> right. But, but not know. just for fan service or anything like that. Like, they're not just doing weird camera angles to get under the skirt or whatever. <laughs> yeah, Why man. am I even watching this show? Because <laughs> <laughs> you like Sasha. Because you're a Sasha fanboy. I just became a Sasha fanboy. What are you talking about? <laughs> that was because of her design at the end of the tournament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a good design. What can I say? Actually, well, interesting enough, I would have assumed by now we're week nine that I would have found a, a cosplay or two, but I actually haven't found any. And I'm always on, like, social media scouring for these things, and I still haven't found I don't know, maybe it's out there, and I just haven't seen it. But, yeah. Must be a small circle. Right. And was he even back on the top ten charts this week? Uh, I think the show dropped off. No, oh. It was out. Yeah. Which was the issue, and that's why I'm always like, oh, Roman's going to talk about this, Roman's going to talk about this, because... I don't know, it's one of those shows where it's just kind of like going deeper and deeper and deeper into the lore, and it's just kind of like, well, who is it? Who are they? Who is it? Oh, by the way, now it's a tournament, and Anos is OP. So it's like the one for sure thing that we know is that Anos is OP, can just do what he wants. But it's a like, in terms of who he's after, who these guys are, who his generals are, what they're capable of, it's just kind of like, ah, eh, who cares? Here's Anos just flinging someone halfway around the world. Yeah. So, yeah. Just throwing people around like they're nothing. Yeah. And and I get it, and that's the the appeal is him just being OP, and it's OP and deal with it. But at the same, at some point, you're going to need to be like, okay, we need to make story. And so that the last couple of episodes, we were getting story, so I appreciate that. Uh, but, yeah. That's why I defer to Roman. I'm just kind of like, maybe someone who's actually been paying actual attention and not someone who's just kind of like watching the tropes. Just kind of like, oh, I, I understood that reference. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also kind of wondering, I'm sure they'll get into it, who killed the hero 2,000 years ago. It wasn't Anos? No, they said a human murdered him. Uh-oh. And I guess ever since then, his uh, source hasn't been the same, so he's not going to be the same person as he was back then what's funny too is that they they say oh it's, this is the demon realm and this is the human realm and this and that yet they all look the same yeah <laughs> it's not much different is it like just this half is yours this half is ours right. just stay on your half basically. most of the time basically and why did they have to go to the hero realm why didn't the heroes go to their realm yeah, that's very humanist. Right? Well, whatever. They could beat them on their own turf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what they're doing. Like, I know it's some kind of... Cross... Cross... School thing, yeah. School thing, but yeah. are they, like, going to be in groups and have to do things together? Or are they, like, another tournament type of situation? Or... I just know it's not starting, at least in the show, like their world for another 10 days huh. seeing as how they zipped on over there yeah so what's going to happen is that Anos is just going to lift up the human realm on his finger and then just fling it and just throw it yeah it's just going to happen <laughs> everything will be over it makes you wonder how the humans ever won <laughs> at all or how they managed to kill him he let them kill him remember because he let the hero stab him because he was tired tired of it wanted to wanted peace yeah that, that's what I'm saying that's just you know still no one else could step up and it's like you had the most OP of OP and they still just crumble just because Anos is dead or I guess found peace and no one else was just kind of like yeah we don't want peace we just want to kill these guys let's go yeah. right but you know, I guess maybe the, um, that's the question that I'm waiting for maybe they'll answer that question like the next episode so you know, another thing about it, it the prob it, they probably didn't have the heroes go to the demon realm because they have that barrier around their their area. Right. That Anos made. Right. So, mystery solved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and with that, that's that's my thoughts. 
Yeah. Do uh, you have anything, any closing uh, thoughts? Uh, I want to see more of the main villain. We only got a glimpse of him in episode 8. Okay. Uh, I want to see what he's able to do, why he was able to go into the past and change everything and erase huh. people's memories. and like I want to see how he stacks up against Anos. Okay. I don't think we'll get to that this season, though. Yeah, fair, fair. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I want more Misha, and more uh, mom and dad. That's what I'm in it for now. I'm in it for that. Yeah, we can M- use, use MMD. Mom and dad. MMD. That's what I'm in it. Misha, mom and dad. Mom and dad. All right. SMD. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, you can go ahead and stop it. All right, so Monster Girl Doctor. Yeah. So Monster your favorite. Girl Doctor, which I haven't watched since the episode two. Really? 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 Oh, then. That's why I was saying. I need to, now that they've been making the centaur like more of a, a main character, I should start getting back into it because it's not focusing on the Lamia. <laughs> oh, so then you're, man. <clears throat> you said the second episode? Second episode, when they rescued the mermaid. Oh man, so she kind of faded off into the background, and they introduced uh, the Harpy Girl, they introduced the spider, actually, Arachne. Yeah. She actually became, or Aranya, I should say. Yeah, Aranya. Oh, that's her name in this one? Yeah. Which is actually Spanish, I think, for spider. Mm-hmm. Correct. Correct. Uh, for those who don't speak Spanish. <laughs> you, you heathens, how are you, you going to understand Japanese and not speak Spanish? <laughs> right. But, um, yeah, she, she became more prominent. She she actually came up because she remember she was the one that gave Safi the egg. Yeah. Um Scotty, she actually Scotty. the 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 leader or the mayor or whatever of the, the city. She actually uh, I'm not gonna spoil it, but yeah, she came through. Um they give her ice cream. You're not that far off actually. <laughs> um Let's just say that uh, she's a dragon girl, and dragon girls are apparently developing now too. So, right. Um, yeah, it's actually, uh, now that I think about it, I think the last one I actually watched, but I don't think I recorded, was the one with the zombie girl or the flesh golem, whatever they called her. Kunai. Yeah. Yeah. That was the last one I watched. Okay. So I know who Scotty is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're you're basically there. Then. Um, <laughs> she. Yeah, this is. I'm trying to keep this a spoiler friendly, so let me. I'll just change the focus onto the the girls themselves. It's in. It's all the same issues or or discussions that we had the last time we talked about it, and it's still the same. It's like it wants to be wholesome. It's kind of like, oh well, they're sick. Let me uh go Doctor House on this and see what ailment is wrong with this monster girl. Oh, okay, cool. This is all you need to do to cure yourself. By the way, Doctor, isn't there some way I can pay for you? And it's then yeah, and then it's kind of like fan service boobs, awkward position, and it's like okay, it's like I, I take PayPal and right, order. You, you know, pay, cash is good too. And pay Safi, <laughs> Safi is really good at handing change. Yeah. So, but instead, it's just all like, oh no, doctor, can't I use my centaur boobs? And it's just kind of like okay. And that was, again, one of the, the advantages of Monster Musume is Monster Musume didn't make any hide what it was trying to be. No. It, it knew it wanted to be lewd. It was lewd. The girls all had issues, but it was just kind of, like, endearing. And these ones, the girls are all like, I can help. You know, I'm going to use my special monster abilities to help out. And it's like, yay. And it's like, okay, I can dig it. And then all of a sudden, it's just all like, look at this awkward position. Okay. And it's like, oh, Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, and and that's why it's it's like I wanna to promote this show more, but it's just kind of like pick a side, pick a lane, man, pick a lane. Are you gonna be edgy? Are you gonna be wholesome? Right. And the the most recent episode from from yesterday was they they helped out the um the giant giantess. I don't want to. She's not a no girl. She's giantess, right? Right. And so, of course, it's all like, okay, cool. You know, they helped her out and all that. Oh, he fell into her boobs. Oh. <sighs> so, like, okay. And, you know, everyone's like, oh, it's a giant. Oh. And then it turns out she's just kind of, like, normal. She's just kind of mellow and all of that. She's not dangerous at all. 
For once, we're going to have to actually, well, I guess if we were, I was about to say, for once, we're going to have to see one of these monster girls actually be terrible and awful and not be sweet and cute and endearing. But at that point, we would just, I guess in terms of the the giantess, we'd just be watching Attack on Titan. Right. But, however, you know, one of these days, it's going to have to be like, this girl is, oh, so sweet. It's like, actually, she's evil and oh, you know? Yeah. So just yeah. that'll actually be breaking the mold. I mean, they kind of try to do that with uh, Arachne. Oh, make her be the bad guy? Kind of. Yeah. In, that... the, in the couple of episodes they introduced her in. Yeah, that didn't last long. And then she just became a dominatrix. Correct. Likes to tie people up. <clears throat> Which is funny because the uh, the spider girl in Monster Girl Doctor is actually a, a very damn good seamstress. She actually made an entire like wardrobe for the, the giantess. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Was it so, so? Yeah, <clears throat> actually. And I think that's uh, the advantage that... Uh, Aranya, I believe her name is, has over Rachnera, is Rachnera actually gets fatigued if she uses too much webbing. And this one, at least for now, does not have that uh, side effect. So she can she actually just keep, keep going it going. Yeah. Yep. So, and she, uh, she actually has four arms, too. Is that a two? Yeah. Or so. is she only walking on four legs? Uh, no, I think, I think she's a tarantula style, so I think it's like six legs. Oh. So two legs and four arms. Um, no, it, it's it three, it three legs, three legs on both sides, and then four arms. So that would be what eight total. Yeah, that's still eight. Yeah. No, wait. Two, four, six, eight. That's ten. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't get. However, it, it works out. You know, yeah. whatever they want to do, it's fantasy. So. Yeah. So. Um. Not gonna get into the scientifics of a, a rat. Um, <laughs> well, you're just gonna have to watch Monster Girl Doctor and become a, a physician. Yeah, I'm sure Dr. Steve tells me, or whatever his name is. Dr. Glenn. Yeah. Guren. Glenn. <laughs> Has he gotten a personality? Um, If um, I'm just trying to help everybody as a personality, then yes. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> if um, nothing gets him angry, nothing gets him sad, nothing gets him frustrated is a personality, then yes, he has that. So no person. All right, whatever. I mean, you're you're anybody who's watching this is watching it for the girls anyway, so mm-hmm. it's not like they care about this dude. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe there is somebody out there who's like rooting for Glenn. <laughs> yeah, they're rooting for him to pick one. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, yeah. Um, and that's what it is too. It's also kind of like, are you a harem? Or are you not a harem? It's just kind of like. So, yeah, Tisalia is all, like, you know, making her moves, and Safi is just getting jealous, and it's like, mm, are you all going to fight or make out? That's Choose a, one. That's a central? Yeah, Tisalia. So it's all like, uh... So, right now I am I am Tisalia, but I am feeling uh, Rachner. I don't know, it's, it's hard to let go of legs. I'm I'm a I'm legs guy, so, you know. You can't pick the human, man. <laughs> no picking the human. It's cheating. It's like saying, uh, which monster girl do you like? Uh, Glenn. <laughs> no, it's not how this works. It's not how any of this works. Kunai. Kunai. Oh, and there you go. Now you're playing the game. Kunai plays. Kunai is nice. I wish she had a little bit more development, though. Was she only in that one episode so far? Basically, yeah. Okay. That little, like, little two episodes or, yeah, three or two and a half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, she does come back, but she is in, like, Tisalia, where Tisalia actually became... A, a recurring more. character, yeah. Okay. Um, so, and then even like in the the mermaid came back in the most recent episode, yesterday's episode, and um, I'm not quite sure yet. Maybe she's already been introduced, but uh, one of the characters is actually voiced by Ai Farouz, so Hibiki Sakura from Dumbbells. Oh. She actually plays somebody in the show, but I don't know, and maybe or maybe I do know, but yeah, hmm. I don't want to spoil that for you. Because okay. I know you gotta watch it. You gotta watch it. I'll probably watch it. Probably won't record it, but I'll watch it. Yeah, it's 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 nice. It's nice. <laughs> it's you know, it's it's like tame compared to pretty basically everything else out that this season, at least that we've been talking about. So it's you know, it plays it safe. You know, it it doesn't go too far this way. It doesn't go too far the other way. And it's just kind of like you know. Yeah, and then uh, fan service. He falls in the boobs. Right. 
but that's every hair protag. tag. Right. They fall on the boobs. And but then it, they get yelled at. But you know, it's like, oh, he just, he, you know, just he's performing these life-saving techniques and whatnot, and then it's just kind of like, cleavage. I gotta ask, does that happen in Japan all the time? Which one? Where people fall into, uh, into women's boobs? Uh, no, because then they would have uh, extremely packed jails. There's still a thing called sexual harassment in Japan. Yeah, but if it's an accident, <laughs> does that count? The super overly polite and respectful Japanese culture would not allow that. <laughs> okay. I mean, we're, we're going to talk about Kanojo. Is... I remember when he was just hiding behind the sign, and that old woman is all, like, creepy. So, you know, imagine, and it's just him, that's just him kneeling behind a sign. Imagine if he was walking up the street and falling into girls' laps. I mean, if it was a harem pro tag. Oh, good. <laughs> um, I'm, just, I'm just curious, because I know they do this all the time right. in anime. I'm like, is this just them living out their fantasies through anime? You no, know, yeah, yes it is, actually I, I it is. I want to fall into girls' boobs, so yes. let me just make this character. Yes. Oh, there we go. Yes, actually, you are correct in that regard because um, when you, when you look at the Japanese as like in in real life, again, they're extremely disciplined, extremely respectful. You know, right. they don't they don't even believe in handshaking, let alone like how much we do. You know, that's why that's the the bowing culture and all right. of that. Um, and even when it is, you know, they don't. When you like offer a business card, you know, you do it with both hands and you extend it like that and you receive it with both hands. So even then, handshaking with that, you know bitch ass one handed stuff that ain't gonna fly nah dude we do it double handed you know so and and in the, the bowing culture as well the the more respect you have for the individual the deeper the bow right so it's this doesn't really give off the air of the type of, of culture the type of people that would just be walking down the street and oh I tripped and fell in her boobs that's the point I'm trying to make I mean if he just tripped mm. That's not really... If he just tripped, everyone would get out of his way. <laughs> and and then they would, after he went splat, then they would help him up. Uh. But, um, yeah, that, that... Because they would think that him tripping is actually intentional. They'd just be like, oh, he's you know, trying to probably do something in the concrete or something. By the way, make sure you clean up your uh, your spit and any uh, bodily fluids that clean, you know came out there. They've got to keep the streets clean. Okay. So, you are correct. They are living out their fantasies through anime, which is why when people get mad at anime for being anime, it's the most hilarious thing. So, remember, dude, they don't even want you making noise in your own house. <clears throat> in your house? Yeah, in your own house. Yeah, keep it quiet. Well, we're pretty quiet at my house. They yeah. like us. Yeah, when, um, a couple of years ago, when we were at the B&B, &B and there was like, I don't know, 10 of us maybe in the house? And we were just kind of like, like, like almost like how we're talking right now, you know, how kind of we're like, how when we laugh, maybe a little loud and all that. But then, you know, the person that uh, had the B&B, &B, uh, she would always be able to like, yo, keep it down, keep it down. And I'm like, we're basically, we're already at a whisper. Like when we're at the Fairmont at Fanime, we're way louder than this. And that's a hotel. Yeah. They can definitely hear us through the walls, but over here, yeah. Over here, it's all like, just, it's like a, less than a... Room room volume, yeah. To like barely be at a whisper, and it's like, and also the TV can't be higher than like four decibels. So you gotta have like hearing aids and to hear. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, speakers, headphones for everything, which is also something that I noticed too. Now that we're going into this tirade about Japanese culture, which I, would probably be better suited for the Kanojo thing, but I'm gonna end on this note. <laughs> and and most and a lot of the shows that I've been watching, like in the last maybe like four or five years. All of the Japanese people tend to have their cell phones on silent now. Like, they don't even turn their ringtones on. I have mine on silent all the time. I don't. I, I put mine on silent when I go into the office, but once I leave the office, boom, I turn it on. I, well, I get calls from bill collectors. Oh, yeah. That so I don't want to hear them. That and when it. I was going to college, my ex was constantly calling me while I was in class. Oh. So I'm like, God, you know I'm in class. Why are you calling me? Got it. Turn this down. Yeah, that'll do it. So you have a reason to. So now I just leave it off. Leave it off. Even then, I didn't have the ring to ringtone on. I had it on vibrate. Mm -hmm. But now I just leave it on silent, and I just check it every ten minutes. Got it. <laughs> and then and then you're like, oh, you're you now these days Roman is praying that it's a bill collector instead. It's just 
tagged by me, tagged by me, tagged by me, tagged in Discord by me, tagged by me. And like half of it, I'm like, like. <laughs> Others, I'm like, hide. No. <laughs> he's that, doing the hide more than he's doing the like. That's the Nero stuff. Hide. Hide. So, Nero oh, stuff. Hide. No. Wow! <laughs> oh man, we're gonna have fun on Kano Jaro. All right, all right, all right. I see you. So, anyways, um, all right. Well, then, yeah, that's uh, I know Monster Girl Doctor is pretty in and out because really, like I said, I wanted to have this discussion later on when Roman is more caught up because there, you know, again, it's not the most complicated of shows, but there is still some like oh snap moments. So I don't want to completely take the. Uh, Surprise. The, yeah, the Shock. amazement out yeah. of it. So uh, I'm going to leave it there. But in, in conclusion, we do have we have more monsters. By the way, um, I do want to say, too, that like the giant Hess, I, to my knowledge, has not been done in like Monster Musume. So at least they've, they've done a new type. So and then um, their take on, on Harpy was, uh, I think, is a little bit better than uh, Poppy. Than Poppy? I think so. More mainly because she's legal, but. Wasn't. Poppy? She was I the same age as Mia. Mia was like 16, though, right? I don't know. Yeah, so... And... <laughs> <laughs> I just know they said that she was the same age as Mia, because Mia was alright with her bathing with the dude, right. and that's when Smith was like, are you sure you're okay with this? I mean, she looks young, but she's your age. <laughs> La Mia Chizuru. I'm a Mia Soda. Oh, yeah. I'm a Mia Soda. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. I think the closest I got to a giantess in uh, Monster Musume was that dryad uh, tree mm -hmm. plant creature. I think that was the closest I got to a giantess. Yeah, but that, that's not really a giantess. Right, that's a dryad. Yeah. So for you, you plant uh, people. Yeah. Plant folks. But yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I'm, like I said, I'm liking it. It's definitely not the show that I come running to. Like, ah! Oh! But but I, it gets the job done. Um, I'll be sure to catch up by the. Uh, End of season three. Yeah. And and again, like you said too, Tessalia. Tessalia actually I would say is the most developed character. Because unlike like Safi, who's just kinda like won't nut it up and like do something, Tessalia actually takes initiative and does something. She's a leader, she's a fighter, she actually has expressed openly her feelings for Glenn. So she doesn't take crap from nobody, so yeah. and she's a Joe Sama, so come on. Yeah, I mean I knew you would like her just from that. As soon as she did the laugh in episode one, I was like, oh, was He's gonna love this one. There you go. You know me already. You know me. So, just like Mabe. <laughs> Mabe, Summer Mabe and FGO. <laughs> I know. Done. <laughs> Done. Done, son. Done. Mabe, the Ocho Summer. <laughs> She's even got that spoiled rich girl laugh. <laughs> Done. Who said that? Was that Robin? No, that was a Jerker. Oh, she said that. Yeah, she that's right. That. She says it twice. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, Jerker. You can call her Jerker. That's uh, John Berserker. So, Jerker. In case you're wondering where that came from. How it works out. Mabel Joe Summer. Alright. <laughs> so, so, let's talk about Tenjo Tenge. The Korean Tenjo Tenge. You might know it as God of High School. Yeah. Uh, you were just telling me about that off... Uh off the podcast that uh it reminds you a lot of that show so did you ever watch uh air gear i did not okay so um it's the same it's oh great so oh great was kind of like a, a hentai artist he did hentai dojins and then all of a sudden he's like i'm gonna make a series and tenjo tenge the manga which i'm more familiar with than the anime was but it, it like was very like there was boobs all over the place and sometimes a little bit even more he pushed the line to almost make it R18. He really did. But it actually had a very convincing storyline that actually had to do. At first, it was like, you know, high school students want to prove that they're the biggest badasses. And so then they start, you know, they go, into, they show up in the high school, they start fighting around. Then they meet the Natsume sisters. And then the Natsume sister, Aya, um, like, puts him down, puts down Nagi. And then um, in their fight, he falls through the roof. Yep. And lands on top of uh, uh on top of Maya, and her boobs. And her boobs. Of course, okay. she's in the shower. So, and as a result <laughs> of that, she falls in love with him. And then she's all like, "Okay, you gotta be my, you know, my fiance and all that." And so, 
and be and then from there it actually uh just goes wild it goes absolutely wild we get um you know there's there's tons of fights and all that and then by the end of it we start like with there's the flashback arc with uh aya and then their other brother sheen and they you know they discover the the secret society because there's always a secret society of the high school that runs the high school yeah. and have all the power and it then they you know then they start getting like superpowers and the powers of the phoenix and all of that got a high school just reminds me of that and and it's like except not as much fan service obviously <laughs> there's not no not as much uh boobs and uh I don't know a family friendly way of putting the the bottom realm but the bottom stuff but yeah you know what I'm saying the box yeah there you go but again it, it, he he's he skirts the line just enough but he doesn't show anything so it's like he gets away with it right. and then um what's funny too about Tenjo Tenge is they tried to bring it over to the states and DC Comics actually bought the rights because DC Comics at the time they wanted to start getting into manga because they were like manga's gonna you know be be the future and they picked up Tenjo Tenge and then they censored it. So when uh, <laughs> the main character Nagi fell through the shower room and landed on top of Maya, they actually put like underwear on her and it's like she's in the shower. Why would she be wearing bra and panties? It's just one. <sighs> okay. But yeah, no, I, uh, that was one of my my all time favorites. Um, and and yeah, it was it was really great. I heard that towards the end, it kind of like got a little confusing. And then he started doing air gear, and he just I don't know if it ever even finished. Honestly, I don't know. I think he just kind of shifted over to air gear, and then just just kind of ran with that. I don't know, but I I might have to go look into that because God of High School is really giving me Tenjo Tanky vibes, and now I'm really like, oh man, I gotta. Should go finish this. <laughs> go see what happened. <laughs> Just not the not the American release version. No. Right. <laughs> so um yeah, and it's it, that's what I'm saying. It's like you know the Jin has you know obviously his grandfather is really badass and he was sought by a secret society. Um and you know he's he's got classmates who are equal. And what's curious too is I want to believe them when they say like like you and was it bike bike bike. The the other dude, the uh, karate dude, psych. The dude that beat up Mita. Oh, the other um, guy in the squad. The guy that knows how to cook. Han. Han. I don't know where I was getting bike from. Bake. That's why I was looking at you like. Han. 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 And and Mita. <laughs> and and so they give off the impression that they're not like, the just you know the Vegeta and the Piccolo of the group. You know, where they're just they're like, I'm super strong. Ah, oh, we need the main character to save us. I want to believe them that this isn't what's going to happen. But at the same time, it's kind of like... So... Yeah. Like, you know, Vegeta is all like, I can beat Kakarot. And then he fights Kakarot. He's like, oh, I can't beat Kakarot. And then Majin has to help him. Technically, every fight that Vegeta's ever had with Goku, he's won. He knocked Goku out when they were... Fighting when he first came to Earth, he, okay. Goku couldn't fight anymore. Okay. He crushed his legs. The second time he knocked Goku out after he got his Majin powers and they decided to fight, he knocked Goku out. That wasn't on his own though, man. That was with Majin powers. Doesn't matter. He fought him. Okay. And he knocked Goku out. Any time they have ever fought, fought, Vegeta's won. On his own though, no Majin powers. The first time they fought, he won. Yeah, but he had a good monkey on him. It's a power he has. It's not like he's not going to use every power he has. I get that, but he still lost. And they had to turn Gohan into a monkey to have them beat Vegeta. And the only reason he lost is because he cut off the tail and Gohan fell on him. Does that count as a loss for Vegeta? Because Gohan was a monkey. I'm sure I don't even remember any of that. I'm like, <laughs> did that, is that really a, Was that a, Jeez. Yeah, Man. Vegeta threw that ball of light into the sky that, uh, what do you call it, uh, replicated the glow the of the moon. Right, I remember uh, that. So he could turn into the great ape. Right. Um, after he crushed Goku's legs and was fighting with everybody else, he had to Robi sh- snuck up and cut off his tail, shrinking him. And he was still beating up everybody. They had to turn Gohan into a monkey. 
by having him stare at the orb in the sky. Right. And Vegeta getting his butt kicked, but eventually cut off Gohan's tail. But because he was so beat up, he couldn't get out of the way as Gohan was falling and Gohan landed on him as a monkey. And that's how the fight ended. He went back into his old spaceship and flew off to uh, Frieza. See, I'm having a hard time giving that because it's not an honest fight. Not because of the monkey powers, but because of everyone else's cross involvement. Because you, you know, yeah. See, that's. Mm. I know it's it's technicality, but at the same time too, it's like you know, it's like in WWE when someone comes in and hits the you know interferes with the match and hits them. It's that's the end of the match. That's the end of the match. So I don't know. I definitely can't give them, and that's why I'm having such a hard time with the Majin thing. It's like, nah, because, you know, you can't, it's a straight-up fight. One-on-one fight. But it was a one-on-one fight. Yeah, but see, when Vegeta, I, I agree with you that turning into a monkey is fine with Vegeta and Goku, that's fine. But would he have still won, though, if he would have kept going? That depends. Goku did have Super Saiyan 3. He didn't use it. And that's that's but to bring it back. That, I mean, he's still lost. Goku was knocked out long enough for Gohan to almost get killed, Vegeta to be killed, sacrificing himself. So you're you're talking about when they first came to Earth, right? This is the the rat no not the rat. So um, the Nappa and Piccolo or Nappa yeah, and Vegeta, the right? First time they came to Earth with Nappa and Vegeta was when Vegeta turned into the monkey. Right, and uh, they had to turn. Gohan into the uh, monkey or Ozaru in order to defeat him and he cut off Gohan's tail and he fell on it. Which is what ended the fight because he couldn't fight anymore. He just crawled to a ship and flew off. Which uh, Krillin was going to kill him with Yajirobe's sword but Goku convinced him not to you know, because he always wants to fight strong people and since he couldn't beat Vegeta he wants to fight him again. Hmm... Okay. Mm, I don't know. Well, I guess that's why. That's why, <laughs> like I said, it's that's why I'm where I'm at. Where it's all like, well, then, it if the guys of God of High School had a one-on-one fight with no bullshit, can they have an honest fight? And that's what I'm basically trying to get at. So this technicality battle of technicalities doesn't apply it's like well technically and then technically and then he ended up with the chair and that's what caused him to, uh straight up fight well i mean the rules of wrestling are you can't interfere right and if they interfere it's the end of the sure match. technically the guy that got hit with the chair won but he didn't actually win so and that's actually that's how they did with like the wrestlemania they had out here in the bay area in, in 2015 is um, when Seth Rollins won, it wasn't because he pinned Bro- uh, Brock Lesnar. He pinned Roman Reigns, and that's how he won. And they were trying to say that he beat Brock Lesnar. Right. Well, that's the they, He didn't beat Brock Lesnar. He pinned Roman Reigns. So that's why, you know, that, that angle was that, oh, well, he didn't lose. He didn't, he didn't get pinned. Did he? he didn't get pinned. It wasn't his loss. But in the, in the books, in the history books, eh, it is a loss. Yeah. So... I do have to point out before anybody else does into the uh, comments, if anybody decides to comment, that Vegeta did hit Goku in the back of the head when uh, he was Majin. That's how he won. I mean, that's fine. It was like... Uh, that's fine. They were getting ready to go and fight Majin Buu because he was just getting released, and while Goku was doing something, Vegeta came up and hit him and knocked him out. Oh, that wasn't even part of the fight then. The fight was pretty much over. They had both decided that we have to go take care of this guy, but then while Goku was doing something, but he had not been that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm more concerned with they're having an honest one-on-one fight, and then all of a sudden Piccolo or Krillin just shoots him with an energy blast, and I'm like, okay, that's, yeah, that's that's advantage Goku. That's um, not what I'm down with. That's I'm not down with that. <laughs> and that's why I'm kind of like, I want to see that, you know, they, they promote the And we've seen them whoop other people. Yeah. So we know that against other people, yes. But you know, if you goes up against Jin, is she gonna be able to really like hold her own? And and Han, that I didn't really count that because he just used her her wound against her, and I'm like, eh. so yeah. 
I, I want to believe that the the Koreans tell a, a good fight story. So, well, I mean, you knew it had to come down to Han and Jin, right? It was just how were they going to do it? Yes, it came. It had to come down to Deku and Bakugo. Yes, right. Uh, Naruto so they and Sasuke. Had to, I guess get something, and in order to do that, they had to have his friend start dying, and then he had to do whatever he, he needed to do to win, and that resulted in him attacking the wound. She wasn't bitter about it, though. She was fine with it. She was like, I gotta learn how to be able to deal with that. I gotta be able to fight when I'm injured and still be able to win. This is a learning experience. That's what losers say. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. sorry. I like you. Don't get me wrong. I like you. And I was happy that I actually found that cosplayer. I believe I put it up on the page, too. So, Um, props to the cosplayer. I like like you, Mita. Um, and it's not even like a, a wiper thing. It's an honest, like respect thing. Like yeah. do not elude me to. So <laughs> for those who don't know, you can like a female character without making them your waifu. Correct. It happens. I think, yeah, you would be one of them. Cause my waifu was knocked out in episode three or four. <laughs> and they replaced her in the credits. And, yeah. the opening credits. and then they just got rid of her. So. <laughs> there goes that idea. I thought, I thought they were going to become squad. I'm like, they're prominent in the opening sequence. So I thought they're going to, they're going to become a, like the, the gin squad. And I guess not. Yeah, I thought so. But I guess that's just showing off whoever they're going to fight in the tournament. Yeah. That, I guess <laughs> so I guess we've moved on for that. This is, again, I asked too, this is 12 episodes, right? Uh, I think this one was 12. Okay. I think it was the same as um, Tower of God. Tower of God. Yeah. And, and the reason why I ask is because they changed the opening so late. Now it's like we've already gone through two tournaments now. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think they changed it because we hadn't been introduced to those characters yet. Right. Um, 13 no, episodes. 13. Okay. 13 so, episodes. All right. And I guess we're shifting away now from the tournaments now to the administration staff and all that. Okay. It's like, that's, that's fine. Which they, actually they're pretty badass. Right. They all know they're all pretty capable. I was like, I was actually kind of disappointed because that one episode, they show the dude, what Q stabbed mm-hmm. and that guy's talking about how he killed him. And I'm like, you're just going to kill him off camera. Just like they off the announcer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they start giving that guy a little bit of character development and let you get to see him uh, like outside of work. He's actually a pretty cool dude. Mm-hmm. And then they kill him off. Suck it. I guess the thing with this show is don't get any character development. Just All right. have one trait and stick with it and right. you'll live. <laughs> it's, we're we're going to make you look really, really cool. Or you might even get a couple of fans and you're gone. <laughs> And so it's like, man, the, the Korean storytelling. Right. So uh, Roman and I were also making the joke, too, about how uh, at the end of uh, the 13th episode, you was just going to, like, shoot Jin or, or, like, hit him in the back of the head with the sword. Give him the old Rachel. <laughs> you call it pulling the Rachel. Right. Uh, <laughs> she's going to be the god of high school. <laughs> You couldn't tell she was jealous the whole time. No, I actually had no idea. Oh, man. Didn't you, didn't, why didn't you just see it, Jen? Why didn't you just see it? It was her the whole time. Set everything up. <laughs> everything with your grandfather. <laughs> She's the mastermind. You're in the way of her learning true sword technique. You gotta go. All this just to expand the... Uh... Was it Moonlight, Light Moon, whatever style? Correct. <laughs> Which is great too, because I, I said this um, when we were talking about it before. Is like I get the Taekwondo because that's like the Korean national style, but I was never aware that there was a Korean sword style too. So yeah, that that's intriguing to me. So yeah. Um, and then Han Han just Han just uses screw you karate. It's like I don't even know what form he's using. He's just all like, I'm just gonna brawl. So I'm just gonna punch you in the face. Yeah. And you have the option of getting up or staying down, and I'm like, all right, it gets the job done. That's fine. I mean, he was he was a street fighter, so right. fighting gangs in high school. What do you expect? His karate is probably just all brawling now. Less with, technique, more brawl. So with instances like this, with like especially martial arts based uh, shows like God of High School, I always got to refer to Tekken because Tekken seems to. Well, Tekken has definitely overtaken Street Fighter in terms of like the realistic based martial arts. Right. And it used to be Virtua Fighter, 
like Virtual Fighter 3 and 4 and then like 5, those used to be like they mo-cats, real life martial artists. And all the characters were all similar. Like Tekken has like four or five people that actually use all like the same like version of like Wing Chun or Karate or whatever. But Virtual Fighter doesn't do that. Virtual Fighter has like like 18 characters or 20 characters. Each one is unique. Not a single one of them is also like the same. It's like, no, all 20 are unique. Even the guy that actually uses like Lucha Libre actually is the only guy that uses Lucha Libre. Nice. So, uh, and then there's uh, Aileen. She was the one that came out in uh, Virtual Fighter 5. Um, she uses monkey, like, kung fu. And so oh, she actually, actually like, yeah, like, actually runs around, or rolls around and all of that. So, when I see, like, Han just using, like, screw you karate, it basically reminds me of Miguel from, like, Tekken. Because that's kind of how he was. He was uh, Spanish, but he just doesn't have any style. He's just like, I'm just going to punch you as hard as I can. And when you're on the ground, I might kick you a couple times. <laughs> and there's just, there's no finesse. There's no technique. There's no style. He's just, I'm just going to punch you really hard. And that's like his style. He doesn't have like a real style. It's called literally like brawler. So. Yeah, I, I can go with that. And his, what, tortoise. Oh yeah, them. yeah the the four uh, guardian gods, the Japanese guardian gods. Yeah, I, I apologize, I don't remember their name. I know it's like Soryu was the dragon, Genbu was the turtle, and it was, it was the wolf, and then there was the phoenix. Yeah, I think it was the phoenix. Yeah. So, and they were like the guardian gods of Japan from like the north, south, east, and west. Some you know Shugi Yugi stuff. Ah, okay. So. But I mean, like, they, yeah, they they use them in all sorts of like Final Fantasy used them. They're always in in all sorts of uh, mythology. So that's again another like tidbit that's kind of like weird in a Korean based manhwa that they're using the Japanese guardian gods. And I'm like, all right. I mean, it looks cool, but I I didn't know that the like I didn't or at least I didn't understand. I should say that the the Korean and Japanese culture were so intertwined with one another. So. But then again, someone was telling me um, that we were discussing the uh, the FGO summer event and and uh, all of that, and he was telling me that the Korean interpretation of Goku, the Monkey King, was actually really badass and all that. And I was like, well, really? I have to check this out, yeah. Hmm. So he said that that the Korean interpretation of Monkey King was actually really cool. So I'm like, all right, pretty positive it's going to be Jin. Yeah, I've heard people say that. <clears throat> I've heard people say that uh, he's gonna he goes monkey style or king and monkey or something, and I'm like, I have no idea what that means, and I'm kind of keeping myself dumb so I can be like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, after learning that he kind of the, the author kind of wanted to make like an homage to Dragon Ball, of course, and he's very much like Goku. Right. All he wants to do is fight strong people. Right. That's all Goku ever wanted to do. So. Goku was based off of the Monkey King, so. So you're saying that Sanzong is Yumita? Yeah. Mhm. Mm okay. She's off to the side yelling, "Help me, Goku! <laughs> I'm scared." I'm like, <laughs> sorry. That that Sanzong and uh, FGO. Which is funny because the Sanzong and uh, Warriors Orochi, the, the Koei Tecmo's interpretation. Is actually uh, she's pretty like confident, and capable on her all on her own. Yeah, she has the same kind of uh, energetic, like playful personality and all of that. But she, yeah, uh, there was a a map where uh, Goku was uh, running around. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna fight everybody. And then out of out of nowhere, Sanzong enters the map and he's he actually squeals like a monkey. He goes cookie, and I was like, I laughed. I that, that <laughs> stuck in my mind forever because. The Japanese voice actor actually did the monkey squeal, and um, she uh, and and he's all like, "Oh, we're gonna win, we're gonna sit," and and he uh, actually has invincibility on until she shows up. So you know you can't fight Goku until she shows up, and then he's vulnerable. Yeah. But yeah, the the mo the reason that he squealed will forever be ingrained in my memory. <laughs> so and then at the end of the map, there's a cutscene where she starts naming like your oolong. And your Yamcha by their actual like Chinese names. Yeah. 
Um, what's also, again, interesting about that, and then I'm done with this rant, I promise, is that Koei Tecmo actually used the female interpretation of Sanzang. And Koei Tecmo, unlike Type Moon and Fate stuff, is actually really good about not just gender bending anybody. Granted, everyone is like a generic, overblown, out of proportion anime archetype, sure, but they never gender bend. Like, they're all dudes. They're all dudes, unless it was like this dude's wife or this dude's little, this dude's daughter or something like that. Then obviously they were female. But in the, in the case of Sanzang, obviously originally it was a dude. Right. But it was in still like the Chinese stage plays, they started using like female priests. And then they ran with it in FGO, and then they ran with it in Warriors Orochi. And I was like, wow, okay. So, you know, they saw an opportunity to use, a, introduce another female character, and they took it. So, props okay. to them. So, but yeah, I like uh, War or Koei Tecmo's interpretation of uh, Bulma or Sanzong. You can pick whoever you, whoever you want. <laughs> but yeah. I guess Bulma would be the Sanzong. Because he was the one going on the quest to find the Dragon Balls. Correct. <clears throat> so. But yeah, um, yeah, and this does tell you into God of High School because I have seen people talking about uh, Monkey King and Jin Monkey King, and I don't know what that means. Obviously, we all know the was it the Chariok, yeah, the the power, the spirit power. So yeah, but um, yeah, yeah, this is uh, it, it's getting somewhere, and it was a uh, the issue that I always had with Tower of God about how it was like episode after episode is just kind of like world building or world building i don't know what's going on we're not really getting too much character development and you know all of that and it's just kind of like well hopefully the next episode will explain it the next episode will explain it. instead it's like what roman said it's all like this new character gets introduced yay and then they're gone <laughs> and then jin's yeah. grandfather's there yay and then he's gone and it's like okay oh by the way the announcer guy is pretty badass look at that he's blind he's a blind swordsman you guys love that that archetype right blind swordsmen aren't they badass what was the name of that Blind Swordsman? It's like um, there's movies based on him. I only know the Mortal Kombat and Kenshi. <clears throat> I'm going to look this up. Oh, yeah. Because I know there's a Blind Swordsman that there's like a ton of movies for. It's like your um, Jimbo, right? No, not that one. Zatoichi. Zatoichi, okay. Yeah, Zatoichi. Wow, that is famous. I've never seen it, but I know the name. Yeah, there's a ton of movies. Yeah. I think they still make movies. Like, I think so, too. Yeah. 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 So I, I actually just saw It Man on... Uh, mm-hmm. Saw It Man 1 Saturday night, because, you know, it's Saturday movie night. So I saw It Man 1. Um, and then uh, yesterday I saw, the, like, the first hour of It Man 2. So, um, you know, because... Mulan is Mulan, and I was all like, you know, regardless of your politics and all of that, and the, the actress who plays Mulan, doesn't Donnie Yuen deserve to get paid? You know, it's uh, it's always very short sighted when people just take out their aggressions or their politics or their, their viewpoints on uh, just one person or all that, and they ignore the big picture and all the other people that are just all like, I don't know anything about the communists, man. I just hold the boom mic. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's like, what do you want from me? I'm just doing my job. You know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, these poor guys that are like slaving over there making the, all the armor and all of that and the set pieces, and they're like, I'm not, I don't care, you know? So that's kind of where I was like, all right, let me, let me go. Doesn't Donnie Yuen deserve to get paid? What did Donnie Yuen do? You know, he did his best in Rogue One. So, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, um, yeah, martial arts seem to be uh, your thing, but I should probably go watch Zatoichi at some point. So He was also in a Highlander movie. Who? Donnie Yu. Donnie Yu when? Yeah, Ip Man. Yeah. Yeah, he was in a Highlander movie. Really? Yeah, I forget I forget which one. I know it had the <coughs> Christopher Lambert and the dude from the show. I think they were okay. both in it. Uh, Holy, dude, that was like 99. That was like 20 years ago. Yeah. I, there was there was the one they did was Endgame, where it was kind of like the dude from the show took over from uh Connor McCloud, which was Christopher Lambert. Yeah, I, I believe that was the one where he took over, because uh, I think he they fight on the roof and he has mm-hmm. him kill him. Yeah. Uh, because Duncan I think was Adrian Paul, and Connor was uh, Christopher Lambert. If I remember right. 
we have to know all these things because you know it ties into God of High School. That's why we're doing all of this. And now, yeah. And we were talking about swordsmen. Anyways. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think that's, yeah, it was that game. And yeah, yeah. Because I was like, that was the only one I remember. Because that was basically him passing the torch to Adrian Paul. 2000. 2000 yeah. yeah, 2000. I said 99. 2000. Yeah. Yeah. Don, no, Donnie Yen. Yeah, Donnie Yen. Donnie Yen. Yeah. He was in there. Jin K. Wow. Oh, that's your so, name there. Yeah. Um, four star Jin K win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give us Jin K. Um. Yeah. Well, that's. I think that might be a voice actress issue. No, that's not true. I take that back completely. I'm not even gonna go there. I was gonna say maybe they just can't get Atsuko Tanaka back, and I was like, well, that's wrong. She just did Carmilla Ryder. <laughs> so no, 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 no. I don't know what I'm talking about. Poor Star Gene K, damn it. <laughs> All right, anyways, I'm not going to let my FGO talk get in the way of God of High School. Yeah, we've already let Dragon Ball get in the way. Well, that makes sense, though. That's that that's context, but yeah. Right, right. But, Ooh, but yeah. we went on a whole rant about how Vegeta beat Goku every time they fought. I still declare shenanigans, but okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll defer to Roman, because Roman is the DBZ... Roman is the DBZ... Uh, aficionado so i defer to him yep when you uh when you're willing to watch non-subtitled japanese dragon ball z on the international channel Jeez. you're a fan and that was because like the reason you quit because toonami kept just replaying everything we just found it on the international channel it's like hey they're further along let's just continue watching i can't understand what they're saying but i kind of get what's going on so it's not like it's that hard to figure out <laughs> <laughs> and you're punching someone in the face. I mean, you yeah. don't really, you don't really need a whole lot of context. Uh, b- believe it or not, that was actually what I think is one of uh, DBZ's strongest appeals: is that it's not too complicated. Yeah, anybody can get into it. Yeah, if they're willing. Yeah. So, and and they, you know, they had that that blur technique, which saved them. I'm assuming saved them a lot of animation. You know, the the hoo ha hoo ha hoo ha. Oh, well, they're yeah. speed. Yeah, speeding by. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. But um. Yeah, so got a high school. <laughs> so I also, think... poor Q, losing nine months of pay. Uh, well, the guy shouldn't... can't catch a break. He shouldn't be tearing up the place. Next time we see him, he's gonna be down to a year. Thank, thankfully, he ran into Han and he's getting free meals. <laughs> has to just teach him all his secrets. <laughs> yeah, has to train him how to use uh, whatever that. Chariuk? Yeah, I can't pronounce it, and I Chariuk. don't even try, because then I'm going to just butcher it. Butcher the Korean, yeah. Yeah. So, the special techniques he's going to teach him for free food. That's a good deal, man. Yeah. I'd take it, too. I mean, the dude was digging under a vending machine for 500... 500. Uh, uh, what is it, won? What is a uh, Korean? Ooh. Yuan, I think, is Chinese, and Yen is Japanese. I don't know. I don't know what's the uh, the uh, currency for Korea. It sucks because I was in Korea for like a couple of weeks. Maybe <laughs> I don't. I have I have no idea, and I don't want to be disrespectful <laughs> and just be like, oh, it's called uh, scruples. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Won. It is one. South Korean won. won. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I had it right. Okay. Yeah, okay, that just said you won. I was like, that's Chinese. No, no, I, I, I well, okay, my the way I speak, my sound like i add certain letters or something okay because okay. i know there's a lot of people who sometimes can't understand what i'm trying to say okay because uh i think i try to speak too fast or something well when you do a live reactions you know you got to think on the spot so yeah yeah that's fair but yeah it's one 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 okay 500 one and i thought it was a yen piece because that's the the yen piece is like that's big and gold like that says 500 on it so i was like what's you getting a 500 yen piece in korea right <laughs> so uh but yeah that poor guy can't catch a break he dude. was just worried about why they let that dude's family die and then he gets thrown across the room <laughs> what his arm broken right and then told he's got to pay for everything he destroyed and now he's out nine months of pay and was it his own house too no that was the office oh okay yeah because uh that i don't know if she's his secretary or 
one of the commissioners or whatever, but she's always around him. Right. She was trying to stop him, like, no, wait, listen to me. And then he just busted through the wall and there goes his pay. Yeah. Uh, Park Mushin got mad. <laughs> He's doing his job. I know, right? But yeah, that poor guy. Feel bad for that dude. <laughs> He'll get his comeuppance. I have a feeling. Uh, but yeah, this uh, cult got some pretty uh, interesting people. Yeah, and, and what's funny was I didn't think the the first dude that they threw out there, I was like, oh, this is just the jobber, right? And he's still hanging in there, and I'm like, all right, put down the jobber. All right, put down the jobber. Okay, jobber is getting three episodes now. Put down the job. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I can't recall when the last time a jobber got this much screen time. Which guy are you talking about? The dude that exploded? Yeah. Okay. The the guy that killed the uh, swords guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that dude. Yeah. I was like, we're 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 carrying this on too long. But okay. Alright. I guess if they really are a badass evil organization, they should have even their jobbers should be capable, so okay. I mean their leader is summoning giant swords out of the sky. Oh, and then you had the short shark guy. I don't think he's part of the cult. No. He's just some dude, one of the one of the contestants, but yeah. That dude just wants to kill people apparently. I thought you weren't supposed to kill anybody in this tournament. No, apparently not. yeah, we've uh, moved on from DBZ now we're in JoJo territory. Everyone has a stand. So yeah. Just your your uh physical uh fighting spirit. Thirty eight year old high school dude had a hammer. Right. Thor's hammer, if you go by what he said. Right. Okay, for that thirty-year-old high school, the, the the high school title is that you know they're not even calling it that anymore. It's G O H. I mean, I even asked. I think during my uh, review, mm-hmm. do they have like the equivalent of a GED in Korea? I would assume they do. Like they they can just take a test and get like their high school diploma or something similar. Yeah, I would assume so. I would assume that there is the most countries, most most developed countries have a remedial education program in case, you know, you, you just botch it and then they're like, okay, we're pulling you out of normal school and we're just going to put you in remedial until you get it right. Right. That's why I was like, like kind of confused. Like, why is this dude taking the high school entrance exam? <laughs> like, just get your, I was thinking to myself, just get your GED and go to college. Right. You can still learn after you get your like equivalent of a high school diploma and go learn in college or community college or whatever they have in. Do they have community college in Korea, or is it just college? I think it's just college. It's just college. I think it's just college. Yeah. Is the U.S. the only place that has like a community no, college? No, because I, I believe like England does, like European countries do. Hmm. Yeah, I think, like, but. Some of the, the Asian countries like China and Japan, I think it's just college and university. Okay. Yeah. They just have, what, courses for all levels? Correct. Okay. And then universities mm-hmm. where you go become specialized. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that was the one thing I was con- confused by. Like, why is this dude trying to get back into high school? Just get your GED or whatever the equivalent is and go to college. And again, if anyone does know how this works, I'm all ears. So don't take me as authority. Fact check me. I'm I'm willing to be corrected. I'm willing to. And I'm more than happy to learn too. So yeah. So I'll be like, oh, okay. So yeah. Just you know, let us know. Yeah. Uh, if they have like a equivalent to a GED or something in Korea, or <laughs> if they don't, do they like? Do you just not get a high school diploma if you just drop out? <laughs> Like, how does that work? You're just, you're just done. You're out. <laughs> you're just disowned by your family. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, because we, we obviously know about the God part, but what does the high school have to do with it? <laughs> yeah. Apparently, they're all high school age, and they go to high school, and that's it. But they're not actually going to school, because I never see any of these people in class. Correct. This is like happening during the summer outside of high school or what? 
we're we're thinking too much into this, I think, for yeah. a show that's mainly about punching people in the face. Correct. <laughs> so many Joker playing cards. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then what's her face can just make marionettes, and apparently the marionettes bleed. So. Yeah, that is convincing enough. Guy's right hand girl or whatever she is. Yep. I mean, if you're gonna make something like a marionette that's got to fool somebody, it better bleed. Right, and it worked. So but, uh, yeah, yeah, that's all. But yeah, well, uh, that's it for me. I mean, go ahead. Go um, on, closing thoughts. What? What was the one thing I did want to touch on? Um. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty positive the thing with Jin being the Monkey King, that's just gonna happen. Like he says, he said he didn't want to borrow anybody's powers, but they also said that sometimes it just activates, like it just happens out of nowhere because they have the ability, they just don't know how to do it. Right. And I'm pretty sure it's just gonna happen to Jin. Like there's, he's gonna be fighting somebody that's too strong for him, and it's just gonna happen. Like maybe one of the cultists or something. But he's it's definitely going to unlock, and he's probably going to be upset about it. <laughs> but he, what's he going to do? It, it's there. Yeah, because technically he hasn't lost. Oh, uh, you know, he he injured himself and cost his it lost his round, but he hasn't been beaten yet. That was funny. <laughs> like, pressure point. Hitting these pressure points unlocks my full potential, and all my attacks are going to be stronger. <laughs> I can't move. <laughs> oof, oof. Uh, wow. But that's it. That's, yeah. that's, that's I just wanted to say that. All right. So, well, we'll look forward to Monkey King. Yep. Then, uh, Mira can be Bulma. Huh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Or maybe Han could be Yamcha. I don't know. <laughs> Poor Han. He's going to be in that position, that defeated position. Um,. I mean, for a while, Yamcha was, like, one of the strongest, so... It's true. It's true. Um, Rent-a-girlfriend. Oh, we're there? Yeah, let's rent-a-girlfriend and we're out of here. So, All right. no Ruka bashing. Go ahead, you can bash Ruka. <laughs> I, don't, I'm not, I don't... I don't know if what, I would, what I'm going to say is really going to be bashing. Okay. Because I don't really dislike her. Okay. Like, I... During my, uh, when I watched it and I was doing my, my little review, okay. I said that she's definitely a lot better than what we saw in the first episode she was in. Okay. Where I'm just like, what is your deal? Why are you, why, why are you like this? You've only known them for like an hour. <laughs> we finally, we, we get why. And we got that whole backstory of hers through the credits mm-hmm. where what, I guess she's got a bad heart. Yeah. And I guess if she gets too excited and her heart rate gets too high, she what gets like a heart attack or something? Yeah, she gets she like super sick. Yeah. Um so what she had to keep like suppress down. her feelings and right. stuff to keep her emotions in check and keep her heart rate down. Keep her heart rate down. And I think we did say that she was a rental, right? Mm-hmm. Like that was one of our theories was that she was a rental girlfriend. Right. I didn't want to be mean during my outro, but I was like, it makes sense because there's no way his friend could be able to pull a girl like that. <laughs> I didn't want to be mean, but God. I know I'm not like the best looking guy. I'm not, you know, whatever. But I also kind of feel like that gives me more incentive to to, to, to call out guys. <laughs> like, yeah, you can't. Out of your league, homie. Yeah, it's out of your league, man. Um, cause yeah, the, but then again, I was like, but then again, you might have a good personality, so who knows? Maybe, maybe she didn't like him for his look. She liked him for his everything else. But turns out, no, she was just a rental. Of course. Um, cause we were wondering, like, how did she call Chizuru out for being a rental? Like, how would she know this? If she wasn't one herself. And I guess she's been doing that to try to get what? Some kind of feeling? Because right. she wanted to fall in love or something? She wanted to know what it felt like, yeah. 
because again if she gets too excited then that causes problems with her heart right but she still wanted to experience it and she thought that you know being uh, becoming a rental girlfriend will give her that experience and it just got worse right. every guy her heart rate just went down to the point where she was just dead no um until she bumped into Kazia of all people and then all of a sudden her heart rate goes up to 79 cuz i guess being a total dork <laughs> makes it exciting and then what she hugged him and it got up to 90 yeah that's what she wanted i guess that was her verification that it was real right now yeah. she did know that Shizuru was a rental because she looked her up. <laughs> so it wasn't like it was asking, are you a rental? Because I'm working as a rental and I just want to verify. It was like, I know you are. I want to see if you're going to lie to me. I told you, man. She knows what she wants. She goes and executes. She gets it. Uh, that's basically one of the things I dislike. Like, I'm all for trying to get what you want. But I'm also not for basically forcing somebody to do something they don't want. That's called love. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a one-sided love. But he's like, did you see how much she texts him? Obviously she cares about him. Oh, I was talking about her. That's why I said one-sided. Because he's more like, what the heck? is up with this girl because okay i'm all cool with the whole trial thing mm -hmm. like basically she broke down crying on the side of the road and was like you know just give me a chance give me a trial period or whatever i'm okay with that and i'm like okay you know give her a trial period because you know what what could happen either you still don't like her or you get a girlfriend out of it because you find out she's pretty cool or whatever so you know you don't really lose much except maybe a couple of months however long you have the the trial period for but i don't know i'm not i'm not for anybody trying to force people to do things they don't want well i mean didn't you see how she was crying do you want her to cry i mean <laughs> i wouldn't really care oh. See, this is why you're not a Kazuya. I'm not. <laughs> but then again, it was also Chizuru who told him to go ahead and date her. Yeah, she's an enabler. Um, then this is the same Chizuru that also said, okay, let's just keep lying to your grandma. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Um, I'm also not big on sob stories. Mm. Like, did she even tell him about her heart? So what if one day they're out mm -hmm. and she's super happy and excited and blah, and she just gets sick or has a heart attack? Yeah, just has a heart attack, just drops right there. Yeah. Uh, well, that was uh, that's his dumbass for not asking. Was he supposed to ask every girl that he meets? Do you have a heart condition? Uh, yeah. No. Yeah, I'd be like, that is that. If you actually care for your the person, you sh that's something you should tell them. Right. Willingly. Right, I agree. So, I hope she at least tells him, like, at some point, you know, I have a heart condition, and something might happen, but yeah, it's been okay for a while, so I'm not, you know, whatever. But I do feel like she should tell him at some point. No, I cannot answer that, because I don't know, but I someone did put the, uh, the uh, couple pages from the manga of uh ruka and uh kazuya in uh, the love hotel uh -huh. and i'm gonna leave it at that you get a, a you know you get some more character for ruka and her true intentions and yeah she she's you know she's a wholesome girl let's let's put it at that okay what i'm gonna say is from what i've seen in the anime i do like her better than when i first met her mm -hmm. but then i just found a couple other things i didn't like but doesn't put her below where she was when I first met her. She's still higher than that. So she's gone up. She's gone up. But I'm not on the Ruka train. 
You're not on the Rook. Why are you not on the rocket train? But are you still on the the Mommy I'm Express? Because I'm not a sheep. You're not. No, a, no, <laughs> no, no. Apparently, when I uh, when I shared the meme of the uh, <laughs> what ship are you on? Apparently, everyone's on the Cheezadu ship, and I'm like, really? No, no, I was the only one on the Ruka. Right now, I'm not on really any ship until mm-hmm. I meet them all. Okay. So when the final girl comes in and we see how she is, okay. then I'll pick a ship. That, that, that's Roman. He's playing bias because he's like, well, I ain't going for Aoyuki. So he's holding out for Amelia. That's why. Only masochists go for mommy. <laughs> if you hate yourself, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, Ro- Roman, Roman is Amelia all So is your... Is your friend really like a mommy fan, or is he just trolling <laughs> he's, everybody? He's, he's, he's trolling. <laughs> he's he's trolling. He's um he. I, I keep messing with him because he's like I saw one episode and I didn't like it, and I'm like, why did it hit too close to home? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I said a kind of a half sarcastic, half honest comment, and and again, it's it's one of those things where the creator himself did say he actually visited, like you know institutions like rent a girlfriend and he did some field research on it but other than that it's just kind of based off you know a relationship or relationship issues that's where he got his inspiration for rent a girlfriend there are actual apps like this oh yeah did you see the meme where it's the dude uh and he it was a screenshot of the youtube video but he's all like i rented a mom yeah, yeah that was anime man yeah huh yeah I thought he just found some lady on the street and said, hey, could you be my mom for the day? I'll give you this much money. That counts. <laughs> but that's unfortunate for the mom, though, because he can't leave her a five-star rating. Or a one-star. Oh. Holds his hand and doesn't mean it. That that dropped her ranking by 0.3 points, man. By 0.3 stars. Yeah. Jerk. But so. I can uh, I can understand why it dropped this, this week. With uh, what? With ReZero overtaking uh, Girlfriend? Uh, with his stocking of cheese the oh. entire episode. You know, I know we were talking about this offline, and we'll get back to the actual Kanojo discussion in a bit. But yeah, um, last week it was like uh, Sword Art just skyrocketed to the top. Everyone's like, yay! And it's like, what, what happened to that? It's like, oh, well, Kirito's back. It's like, oh, God, here we go. But then Roman sends me over the weekend the the new one for last week and uh, Re Zero and uh, girlfriend rent a girlfriend are back up at the top two spots and I'm all like well that didn't last too long because and everyone was just happy they're like yeah Kirito's those back oh he still sucks never mind and then Sao dropped five spaces down to number six being overtaken by Uzaki good job Uzaki you deserve it maybe uh, Kirito doesn't like mint chip. Maybe Uzaki had to go beat him up. Loser. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't have anything against Sword. I I gotta always remind everyone and say that I don't. I don't have anything against Sword. Sword Art's all right, but I just I don't know. I just I just stopped watching it. Alternative was great. That one actually was twelve episodes, and it is a side story, and it literally does not have Kirito. They make some references. But other than that, because, you know, Kirito still was the one that saved Sword Art, you know? Yeah. So they still kind of refer to him. But outside of that, there's, like, he's not in there at all. And I'm like, this really is the, the best Sword Art. <laughs> so, um, but it was, it's, like, it's just funny that, you know, your own main character can, like, skyrocket the popularity. It's still, and we'd rather watch this idiot in a, in a fictional isekai world get destroyed over and over, or we'd rather watch a simp. Yeah. And and that's what it is. It's it's just kind of like it's the appeal of like and we've seen it even like in American sitcoms, like with friends, for instance. Now which simp are you talking about? Are you talking about Kazuya or Luca? Talking about Subaru. <laughs> so so Kazuya's the one that's getting himself killed every every week? He is. Internally, he is. mentally. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But um, he he responds like Subaru whenever he uses the Kleenex. That's his resurrection. That's why his basket is almost full. <laughs> is he ever going to clean that thing out? No. That room must smell. Oh, man, the Kleenex. Oh, it never gets old. Well, it does get old. But the joke doesn't age. 
And that's the other thing, too. It's all like, you know that he doesn't uh, care about Ruka because he never took her to see Grandma. No. What a jerk. He didn't even want her at the at the school. But I kind of get that because he didn't want his friend to see. Yeah, and... Yeah, I don't know. I, I am I'm still curious for Takashi Rie's character for Sumi. So we'll see, but I, I think I'm pretty much on the on the Ruka train. Although this episode wasn't really even about Ruka. It was about him stalking Chizuru. Oh, by the way, it turns out, ah, she's an actress. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I already knew that. <gasps> because you figured it out or because you read the manga? I read a comment. Okay. Oh, the worst. Yeah, I forget what it was for. Like, there was, like, some kind of meme or whatever. Mm -hmm. And somebody brought up the... Act, actress arc or something. Oh. And I'm like, ah, okay. There you go. I need to learn not to read comments. <laughs> yeah, comments are a double-edged sword. Sometimes you find some real gold in the comment section, and sometimes it'll just ruin your day. Yeah. So. But, it, it. but it's like, I don't know if they're ever going to, like, they mentioned she's an actress because she brought it up, but are they, I don't know if they're going to get to that arc in, mm -hmm. what? Three episodes? Four episodes? Four episodes, yeah. 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 Hopefully like they not. haven't even introduced the fourth girl yet. Correct. So <laughs> she's gonna be the the um the what's her name? Um uh, the Lala of the show. Lala. Show up in like two episodes before the season ends. Yep, and then that's it. See you in the OVA. <laughs> and Lala stole the show. So <laughs> Like I said, I think Roman is just trying to, you know, try to pretend like he's fair and equal, but in, in reality, he's already like, come on, Amelia. No, well, I mean, I've already mentioned that I don't base my opinion on whether I like a character based, uh, because of their voice actress or voice actor. So. Okay. Okay. If that was the case, then what Mamako would have been my favorite from, you know, Mommy Online. He said it. He said Mommy Online. He said it. Mm -hmm. He said it. He admitted it. He doesn't like it when you call it mommy. <laughs> no, I don't like when she says mommy. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. She would have been my favorite, but because, you know, Darkness is voice actress. But... Right. Kayano, my goodness. But she wasn't. Okay. All right. All right. I'll admit, um, and, and the same thing, too. It's all like, I, I do enjoy Chizuru, and obviously, Amami Asura is a wonderful voice actress, but it, I think that what gives Ruka the edge is that Shizuru is just is wishy-washy and it's just kind of like, eh. and and I personally still don't know the context of what what does it matter that she's an actress and she's learning about all of this because she still has money issues well she gotta pay for the school is that what the big deal is yeah that's what she said the school's expensive oh. then she's got to pay for her other school okay and rent and <laughs> okay now that makes a bit more sense now I get it so, well, at this point, I would just, just take on Kazi and then milk him for the last $2,000 he has. 200000 Well, in in oh yeah, 200,000 yen, $2,000 American, sorry. The one thing I will say is I am a little upset at Kazi about the way he's kind of treating Ruka. Like, if you're giving her an actual trial period, give her a, a fair trial period. Right. Don't just already dislike it. It doesn't even look like you've been on this trial period for more than a week. You're already annoyed by her? Yeah, just... Give her a fair chance. You might actually like her. Yeah, and I mean, I'm like, when you, when they showed all the text messages, I was like, those aren't even really unrealistic demands. I mean, um, no. maybe I have a holler, higher tolerance, maybe. <laughs> well, but, maybe the whole, you gotta like all of my tweets. <laughs> that, that, that already happens. Like, I, I, that depends. What, what are you tweeting about? <laughs> That's a very nice cupcake. I'll like that one. Yeah. Oh. Political? <laughs> nope. Yeah, that'll do it. Blocked. Blocked. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know why she has your her heart rate just dropped. And good job. Yeah. Oh man. But yeah, that, that's the one thing that really gets me about him. It's like just give her a fair chance. You're giving her a trial period. I know you were kind of forced into it, but still, like I said, you might like her. She might end up being somebody you could see. Having as a girlfriend, just give her the chance. Oh man, I and and he has to uh, clean up his phone because what if she finds that mommy picture? Right. 
There was multiple of them, wasn't there? Yeah. One Which, for every one for every day of the week. That is one thing I have to say. We I'm glad we haven't seen mommy that much ever since uh, they came back from the beach. Right. She's been non-existent. Right. He hasn't even talked about her at all. Right. So. Good job. <laughs> Roman, Roman, it's just code for Roman saying he misses Aoi Yuki. <laughs> well, no. No. <laughs> Roman shed a single tear the day Madoka Magica went offline. Uh, yeah, if you haven't heard, the uh, Magia Record mobile game is getting uh, its US server shut down. Needless to say, I didn't lose any sleep. Wow. Wow. I tried playing the game twice. Right. I didn't get that far. Yeah, I was like, I'll stick with the anime. Yeah. I'll watch the anime, which I actually still got to finish. I got to finish the Magio Record anime. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. (laughs) Oh, man. But, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, um... And then at the end, too... (laughs) Uh, I was uh, surprised at the end of this most recent episode of Girlfriend where they already photoshopped Chizuru in all those different poses where she's sitting on the stairs with the Joker dancing and then she's sitting outside of Avengers headquarters getting a taco from the Hulk <laughs> and then she's just they just photoshopped her all over the park bench. I was like, oh, you guys. And that's why I made that comment. I was like, oh, I would definitely give Chizuru tacos. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. So that would not would actually not change. No, that but, wouldn't. But you know, and and that's again, that's why I I put Ruka over Chizuru is because at least Ruka's upfront about what she wants. Also, going why I like Salia and Monster Girl Doctors again, being honest, being upfront, and you know, you have Chizuru who, you know, you can't tell me that she didn't actually know that he was he was not stalking her. I mean, come on, he's not that good. But anyways, putting that aside, she, she was very into the role. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> um, it would be really, it would be a damn shame if, like Roman said earlier, that someone tripped and fell into her boobs. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Act that. But anyways. Um, and then at the very end, she's all like, "Oh, by the way, here's a phone case. Merry Christmas." And I'm all like, and it really? had fish on it. Right. Did you notice it had fish? It did. It, had, you know, because she studied, she got a whole book on fish. Yeah. He likes going to aquariums. How trite. Right. I don't think I know anybody who will just go to an aquarium. I'd go, I, I've been to museums and no aquariums. Yeah, I don't think I know anybody. No, <laughs> well, you, I, I, I don't know. I'm boring, so. You're trite. You, you just go to a movie like a normie. Yeah, yeah I do the uh, loner movie days. <laughs> now you're treading into Uzaki territory. Yeah, where's my Uzaki to come? pick on me a little bit to get you kicked out of the theater <laughs> yeah yeah that that episode i was like what's wrong with the loner movie day i do that all the time oh man i used to yeah i used to do this all the time when i was a manager too i used to live for those days because i'd be like no one's messing with me no one's bothering me i'm uh, i'm going and i'm coming home and i'm going to sleep yeah so, yeah no that that was actually when i did my best work was was loner movie days i agree too because you know, it's all like you just you just don't want to be around people. You're around people like all the time. In my case, it was working retail, and in his case, it's in college. You're just surrounded by people all the time. You're talking to somebody, or you're you're answering a question. And you're just like, man, just let me go. But <laughs> yeah, but just uh, need that that time alone. Maybe watch a movie. So, but now apparently the the future is uh, rental girlfriend. So yeah, they would never have that here in the U.S. Uh, did they put a stop to the uh, cuddlers? The people that you could hire to cuddle? I don't think so. I mean, Craigslist is pretty uh, pretty available. You can, you can fulfill pretty much anything. It's just, um, again, going back to the, the standards of Japanese society, this, this plays as, as possible in Japanese society. Anywhere else in the world... But to answer your question, I would believe Craigslist, you probably could still find that. Yeah. I mean, I'm not asking because I want no, I, to cuddle I, I, with. Yeah, I just, know. Just to clarify, no, people. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just wondering, because I remember seeing that like a couple years ago, right. that they had people who you could hire to 
just a cuddle. Yeah. If you just wanted somebody to lie with or something, you didn't want to actually do anything. Yeah. I was just wondering if maybe they put a stop to that because isn't that kind of technically prostitution? Because you're selling yourself. Or do they not count that because it's not? Yeah, I, that's a that's a hard legal issue that uh, I think you're trying to get Chizuru and Ruka caught up in. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I I cannot answer that question, but. It's it is interesting. It is definitely it's it's funny because in in again going to the Japanese versus American or Eastern versus Western style, it's like you know you look at the rent a girlfriend, you can get to spend the whole day with them, and in in your example, you just get to cuddle. No, yeah. No aquarium. <laughs> no cafe. No going to the hospital to see my sick gotcha playing grandmother. Right. I mean, I guess if you want, you could put on like. Fish on the TV. Yeah. <laughs> Just playing in the background. But, but yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, I think uh, that's that's what I like. I think, and uh, I guess if I can uh, talk for a moment, let's let's get a, a real power hour going in here. I think that that's uh, in in my my last relationship. I think that's what frustrated me the most was there was no. Um, it's not exactly honesty. But it's cutting through the vagueness. There was no, like, direct, like, tell me what you want. What is it that you're asking me? Because, you know, I take things literally. I'm a, I'm a literal person. If it's right. not right in front of me or I can't comprehend it 100%, it basically doesn't exist. <laughs> so unless you're, like, telling me what you really want or what you're really asking from me or I can actually see it, I, I yeah. Which is why I'm taking a lot of psychology classes now to understand <laughs> understand this stuff and, and see why is it that uh, I can't read between the lines sometimes. But that's that's kind of and that's why now I'm gravitating towards these characters where they are blatant and obvious. And you know, Sundere Sasha, I'm sorry, I'm just not cutting it. But uh, characters like Ruka and Tisalia, where I just all like, yeah, I was all like, okay, now I know exactly what you're in it for. By the way, no, but you know. Well, in the case but I of respect it. yeah, exactly, I respect the hustle. But right. yeah, well, that makes more sense. Right, so that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. So it's kind of a a real world personality quirk that tra- transcends into uh, the wife who picks. So yeah, but you know, and it and it's rough too because there are reasons why people can't say you know, like. Ruka doesn't be like, oh yeah, I'm this way because I have a heart condition. And even though someone did say that that's a true, actual thing, where people um, that have low heartbeats actually seek out ways to elevate their heart rate because they don't they don't experience it. Like, your heart rate is something that you don't think of, but at the same time, too, when you have a, a weak heart or a heart condition, you have to keep it like that because if you elevate it too much... Maybe it's a, a a smaller heart in the chest or a compressed heart. It just bleh. So that condition does exist, just but bleh. yeah, you just, <laughs> you know, your tiny little heart just gets too excited and then it just like, pops. So, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. If Ruka was real, I'd date her. She looked like she'd be a good girlfriend. They'd like them tweets. I mean... I guess I kind of had kind of both going. Like, w- one of my exes was very much, come over, hang out, let's do this, let's do that. Mm-hmm. You know, texting me all the time. And then my other ex was more, I'll text them, and then like four months later, they text me back. All right, yeah, that's that's how it goes. Or you try to set up a date, and they'd be like, okay, and then the day of, they cancel. Yeah. It's like, I've been I've been through both. Right. So I I like the the attention more where it's like come hang out with me do stuff with me you know right. so I, I get i get the appeal of ruka i i would date her right if she was real she seems like a cool girlfriend but just the way she went around it is it just doesn't fit well. roman likes the uh the goldfish phone cases yeah i don't like being forced to do what i don't want to like, if I've already said I don't want to date you and you're still constantly, like, trying to force me to go out with you, which would never happen, I already know, but still, that's just not going to make me, that's not going to help your cause. 
<laughs> but it's a trial. What do you have to lose? It's like Gamefly, but for dating. Well, like I said, if they if they said this date for like three months, and if you're not into it, whatever, yeah. I'd do it. Because again, maybe I might end up liking them. I don't know. But if you're not offering that, and you're just bombarding me with go out with me, go out with me, go out with me, I'm like, no, I don't want to. I've told you this multiple times. But she will keep your dirtiest secret intact. Mm. That's when I just go out and just air it out. Here's my dirtiest secret. <laughs> okay. You got nothing on me now. Okay. Then that then that's the end of the show right there. <laughs> <laughs> she either goes away, Ruka goes away. That's the end. Well, I mean, he was about to go tell his friend that Shizuru was a, a rental. And Mommy still hates you. I care less what Mommy likes. Oh, no! <sighs> <laughs> I mean, how could you still want somebody who dumped you because they fell in love with somebody else? And that dude doesn't <laughs> exist, huh? Or at least we've never introduced, been introduced to that dude. Yeah, we never introduced to him. I kind of feel like he does. Because I remember, because I was doing the editing of episode three, I think it was. I think that was the episode after Chizuru and her meet. Mm-hmm. They, she gets her text, that text message where she goes, oh, sorry, my brother is, you know. It didn't look like it was a text from her brother. Like, I can't exactly remember what the text was, but it didn't sound like something her brother would send her. So, I don't know. Interesting. Because remember, her whole goal was, I'm just going to break him up. Because he can't get over me that that, that quick. Mommy and Ruka, huh? Hey, it's a Shuten and Ibaraki. All right. <laughs> oh, is that them? Mm-hmm. Funny, because I like Shuten. Shu- yeah. See? There's an Aoyuki character I like. <laughs> yeah, and... Um... Toyama now, Ibaraki looks up to Shuten, Awayuki. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Shuten was okay in summer. So, not Shuten. Uh, Ibaraki, Ibaraki was okay in uh, the summer event. Yeah. You'll, you'll get, I hope you like that dynamics. You'll get a lot of them at Halloween this year. But, anywho, um, I am curious to see what Mommy is going to do with Ruka uh, if they even interact with each other. So, we'll see. Let alone when all four of them are together. So, it's going to be interesting if she runs into them together, mm-hmm. like Kazuya and Ruka together. Right. Uh, what is she going to do? She's going to try to break them up? Kazuya, you man whore. Which, which is actually a question I, I have. Ruka was so bent on getting Kazuya to date her mm-hmm. that what if him and Shizuru were actually dating? Would she have gave up, or would she have still tried to break them up so that she could date? I ooh, that's a good question. Uh, I think that she wouldn't have even bothered, but it was because she knew that Chizuru was a rental that that's why she's all like, "Well, you know, you have no atta- no no attachment, so you know." Which but, is weird because she also said that I know you like her, right? So she knew there was still like an attachment a little bit right. on his end, correct? But she was still, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like like you said, they weren't actually dating or anything, so it's not like it really mattered. Right. It's just the way she went around it right. for me. Like, if he was just like, okay, sure, then fine. But he said, uh, no. <laughs> Scums, Scums, yeah. All right. <laughs> I think uh, my, my closing thought, for this is I do is uh keep making FGO references, but Kazuya's voice actor is actually um Galahad from the uh FGO OVA, the Lost Room OVA. Oh, okay. So that would mean his father is uh Lancelot, and this makes so much sense. There's <laughs> a voice actor reference. They're both scum. <laughs> Lancelot is awful. Awful. So that's why his son Galahad. Yeah. What did uh what did Cleopatra call him? Sir Lance's Lance a lot, lot of married women. women. Yeah, Lance's a lot of women. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 
So that that's it. it that's a voice actor reference. Because I was curious, because, you know, obviously it's not Fukushima Jun anymore from uh, Kazuma from Konosuba. Mm-hmm. So I was like, what has he done? It's like, oh, it's going to be Galahad. So, yeah. And uh, we are, I think Galahad was in the new opening, the new uh, Lost Belt opening that just came up. Oh, was he? Yeah, I think he came back. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens when he actually, when Kazuya comes full time into FGO. Yeah, we'll see. So. I wonder if he'll be uh, summonable. Is he going to be another shielder? Yeah. Now look how many moon cancers we have. That used to be rare. Now there's four. Yeah. So two of them are the same though. Yeah. <laughs> so one's a elephant, and the other one is a uh, a police officer. Mermaid. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and who the who is the elephant voice by? Awayuki. <laughs> you can't escape, man. Everywhere you go, it's going to be Awayuki. She is the mommy child. You can't get rid of. Anyways, I'm done. I'm out. I'm. I'm. I think I've uh, talked enough about Ruka, and, and Ruka's great. So we'll see, though. We'll see if she maintains her ranking. Who knows? I might actually uh, be a Sumi fan. So we'll see. We'll see what Takashi Dia does. Yeah. Whenever she gets introduced. So uh, I will tell Roman to uh, to to drop dead, and Rem is the best, though. Rem? Yeah. Rem is Rem is best. Hmm. But yeah. Re zero references. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But yeah. I'm done. I'm done. So I'll just go hang myself right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> he told me to go do it. He told me I'm an Amelia fan, so I better go off myself, play that Sudoku. But anyways, yeah. Uh, anyways. Um closing thoughts? Closing thoughts. Like I said, I can understand why it dropped this week. Because of the uh, whole stocking thing. That was just. I know we just said that saying something was cringy was kind of cringy, but it was it was kind. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, just it, he almost had gin level imagination in this one of what was happening between the, the two of them. Only he didn't have a grandma that was dying, and <laughs> uh, then again, she's a whose grandma might die one day. It's true. She has been in the hospital apparently more than once. So. Anyway, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, next episode is a, a little less uh, Kazia centric, and we focus more on the others, and maybe maybe start working on Ruka's personality. But yeah, cool. At least for me, because I know you're already liking her. Yeah, yeah. So, cool. But yeah, I even said it at the end of my thing that I wasn't on the Ruka train yet. Notice I say yet, because that could change depending on how she is later on. All right. So, uh, I guess to close out the the podcast, uh, stay tuned to the social media. Katana Gatari coming up next week, or at least as of the recording of this podcast. Yep. Uh, and check out the comment sections and the videos, the Discord, all of that good stuff. We, we are taking suggestions. Throw up what you guys are interested in, the community page, all that stuff. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, and as always, just comments. Tell us what's going on, what you guys think. And, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just look out for the videos that are coming out. Again, like, Sano said, check out all of the social media. Um, and we'll catch you next time. Later, Herfgen. Peace.